And we are live on the Castle Indigo live stream series. My name is Alex Centurami, and I am one third of the Dark Fantasy Metal World Tag Team Champions. And of course, the lead vocalist of Blood of Indigo. And tonight, we are going to be welcoming my friend and mentor, Lindsay Schoolcraft, to the live stream series. But before we do that, I gotta let you guys know that we are doing something really cool right now called Three Days of Dark Fantasy Metal, which is basically a campaign where you can listen to the debut album without listening to the whole album. You're just gonna listen to three songs, okay? Three songs by Blood of Indigo. And it's going to be Angelus the Faceless Vampire, Sphinx Collector of Eyes, and Anne Marie Indigo. These songs are going to be on the, deb the debut album. I'm just like getting ahead of myself. It must be the coffee. Um, <laughs> uh, so you can listen to these three songs. Uh, the link is in my bio. Go and check it out. I'm going to let Lindsay Schoolcraft into this live stream right now so then we can get ready to party and I can just take off like a rocket and go crazy. Are you guys ready? I'm sure you are. So let's do this. Lindsay, I'm going to let you in now. So she's requested to be. And Lindsay is going to join us in a few seconds. Are you ready? It's like New Year's Eve. <laughs> Mamma mia! <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay Schoolcraft is here live on the Castle Indigo live stream series. How are you doing? You're too much caffeine for me. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've honestly I've had the the longest day so I'm 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 happy to be here finally it's good to see you I, 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 you know what I, I think that I can relate to you on that because I've also <laughs> had quite a long day too because it started out with like going to like online school and like the York U wow. like uh database like crash and I was like okay I guess I'm not going to school today it's like syllabus week anyway so nobody really goes to school um right but, but then I did my driving lesson because I'm going for my G2 and I'm learning how to change lanes. And I'm my driving instructor is super chill in comparison to like when I was doing it 10 years ago and never finished because of like, I don't know, just being 17, I guess. But it's I remember terrifying like, when you're young. It, it is. It is because when I was like 17, I had like the craziest instructor who was like yelling at me the entire time. And I was like, this is insane. But now my instructor is just like, just flow, man. <laughs> and I'm like, cool. They're probably yelling at you because they were scared for their life. <laughs> probably because I was like, are we going to floor it? And he was like, no, like, just like push the gas, man. Um, but <laughs> I don't know. Like, let me tell you, like, when I was like 17, I kid you not, this was a real story. Like, the instructor at the time was like this, like, guy with a British, like, picture of Ronald McDonald with a British accent. And... He was just like, and, 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 and he kind of spoke like Count Chocula, like the guy on the cereal, how I picture in my head. He was like, Mr. Alex. And I was like, yes, that's my name. And he was <laughs> like, I want you to go on this dirt road, and I want you to floor it down the street. And then we're going to slam on the brakes as hard as you can. So that's what I did. I like was speeding down this dirt road. And then he made me float, like, like to slam on the brakes. And we must have flown like 150 meters down the street. And he was like, lesson learned. If there was someone in front of you, you would have killed them. Do you understand how dangerous that is to drive? And I was like, I get it, bro. I understand. And I was like, I thought I was the eccentric one. Like this guy like took up all of the energy in the field that I just had to be like, I'm listening. I got my hands on pine and three and I'm just like, you know. <laughs> like, okay, up. man. Jesus took the wheel. <laughs> Jesus took the wheel and like set me to hell, man. Like I have no idea what was going on that time, but you know what? Enough of the past. Now we're in the present and now I'm going straight for that G2 so that I can start driving and we're not driving the bus anymore. Wink, wink to the people who get it. Oh, we're driving it. the car. <laughs> <laughs> An actual car. <laughs> Like, for real, because, like, I don't want to take the bus. I want to just drive, man. No, um, taking the anyway, bus is terrifying. Like, don't do that. for real. But anyway, Lindsay, how are you doing? <laughs> I, I, I miss you so much, and I'm oh, so grateful. Oh, I miss you, too. You <laughs> I mean, I only... Okay, so this is hilarious. I only saw you, like, a few weeks ago. But we were in a parking lot, because COVID shows, and we stayed past everyone. It was, like, me, you, Tyler, and who else was there? There was another person there. Nathan, right? Nathan. Yeah. And we stayed we stayed till like midnight talking in a parking lot 
and all the lights went off and we were just like it's okay we got moonlight so it was terribly it was a terribly needed um you know catch up <laughs> absolutely and and we were just like chilling outside like in a parking lot having like a life talk we were just like you know the universe has brought us to where we need to be right now because this is what's happening and by the way, yeah. I took that advice that you had about like that law of attraction, write down the thing that you really want and then just like envision it. And I have to say it's like that was like the most like amazing thing I've ever done. Like I tried oh, it just and it was beautiful. Like good. did you get what you I, wanted I did, or is it at least in motion? It's definitely in motion and some of the things that I wrote down are actually happening. Like like literally two days, like 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 oh, after wow just started happening and that's terrifying it's it's but. crazy like because the way the universe works is like and i'm i'm reading this really good book by the way which i know but we're going to talk a lot about books i'm sure um, that's fine but there's this book um that i'm reading right now and it's called the sculptor in the sky by teal Ooh. swamp okay and it's all about manifestation and the law of attraction and bringing about the things that you truly want in life. And it's beautiful. It is a beautiful book. And there's an entire chapter about self-worth and just mm -hmm. the whole concept of how the fact that you're here right now means that you're worthy because your yeah. lifetimes have brought you to where you're supposed to be right now. And mm -hmm really you're in this lifetime in this lifetime because you're going to evolve into the person that you're meant to be and pretty much and and you're here for a certain purpose and it's your job to figure out the what while the universe gives you the why so yeah i believe everyone has a purpose it's just taking the responsibility to find it work on it accept it and what does Rumi say? Your your purpose of life is to find out what you're good at and, and then to give it away. And it's, yeah. it's true. Yeah. We know it, that with music. So Exactly. And I, I honestly like I just like I, I always say this to you every time I see you, but I, I can't thank you enough for like how much you've done for me personally and even my music career, just like everything. <laughs> you're so sweet. <laughs> I think it's funny, you're like, you're my mentor, and I'm like, I told you once that I believed in you. That that was it. <laughs> I feel like I haven't done anything else. I just got to but, show up and be like, you're doing great, Alex. Just fucking keep going, but, man. <laughs> but, 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 but really, like, you've given me so many great, so much great advice. And just from you being you, that that's enough for me no, to call. Serious, man. Just like, like, I, I, I think that you lead by example so well in our, in our, in our scene. And you're just very kind. Thank you. And, and just like the person that you are, um, you, you just have the energy that inspires so many people, not just me. I think I could speak for everybody watching right now who is a, not only just a fan of you as an artist, but also as a human being. Um, you're very kind. You're somebody that I aspire to be like. That's why I, I say you're my mentor. <laughs> you're so sweet. You, you don't need this makeup. You're, you're beautiful without it, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I mean... At, at any point, like you knew Sorry. this was gonna happen already. You knew I was gonna come on here and just start complimenting. I know. You're... <laughs> okay, you can you because can do what you want. It's your live stream. It. This is like this is like 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 I I feel like this is just kind of my default being. I just kind of want to yeah. tell everybody how awesome they are. But with you, I think it's like no. Oh. But you you are really somebody that I do strive to be like because you're very sweet. The way that you are with your fans is how I want to be with mine. I want people to really. Um, have that same connection because you have I'm this. Sure, they will. You're great. <laughs> I, 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 think they, I honestly, I think they have been. I think the fans that we've made, even just before we've released our album, have really expressed that same sort of feeling. Just like yeah. based on live streams and just hearing the music, they're just like they. I feel like I have that connection with them. Listen, and, I I heard that song today, and I was like the song you sent me and I'm like these guys are gonna be fine like this is great like <laughs> I, I wasn't I wasn't like and I hear a lot of music and I'm really jaded like I'm like I'm super crusty old lady over here because that's what happens when you and you know you ingest so much media on the regular and you know you have to understand the psychology of marketing and life in general just hardens you especially with hard experiences and I I 
and, and I never mean to be a dick or be condescending or look down on someone, but sometimes some people send me music and it's like, nah, bro, like that don't resonate with my soul. Like it's, it's going to work for someone else out there. Like right. I don't have to like everything, you know, but there are, there are like, there's a pocket of fans out there that are going to love that music, but it just, it ain't doing it for me. But when I heard your song today, I was kind of like, yeah, they're fine. Like this is, this is fantastic. Like I, like, it all starts with the music and then you know hopefully you go to that artist's profile on social media and you see that they're not a dick and then like you're not a, you're not a dick so like it's gonna be fine <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate that i, I take that take, for a compliment <laughs> i will take that as a compliment so for the people who have no idea what Lindsay is talking about let's spill the beans right now because like you know I'm going to pull, um, and Lindsay, you're, you may not get this reference, but I know James from Lycanthra will get it. Um, I'm going to pull up what AEW did for CM Punk and just, like, reveal that he's here. Um, I'm going to explain this to you what I mean. So, as you know, I'm, like, the biggest wrestling nerd in the world, and I have, like, an entire shrine of wrestling belts right here. Yes. Um, oh, dear. And, <laughs> and um <laughs> So <laughs> um, basically, AEW is WWE's competitor right now, and they were basically like a grass grassroots like startup company, and then they mm -hmm. ended up like turning and they got a TV deal with uh, TNT, like this like like Turner like Ted Turner's network, and mm -hmm. basically they're like now like head to head with like the biggest wrestling promotion in the world, and they just got like the biggest free agent who left thought like he basically left wrestling because he was, you know, sick of being mistreated and just came back and they just acquired him. And there was a, basically a surprise, but everyone kind of knew. And then it was revealed and it was like, Holy macaroni. This is like huge. So okay. I'm going to reveal this right now. So if you're watching this, you hear it here, you heard it here first and we're not making a post about it until we are basically going to start Press Pre release going out tomorrow. <laughs> so, Curtis, I know you're watching right now. But this is the announcement, okay? Are you listening? Ooh. Guys, I need some hearts. Like, we need to get some action in here. Mama mia. I can't, guys, like, I can't I know you guys are watching. We got to get some action in here. You guys you ready for You can't mash your own hearts on your own live stream? This is bullshit. I can't. I can only send an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> and uh you, you and i guess like and, and flights are restricted in some places so i guess we can't do them um so guys <laughs> are you ready for this news Lindsay schoolcraft is going to be a guest vocalist on the debut blood of indigo album dawn of the shaded world and she's going to be singing a duet with me so this is That's a great. full circle moment for me because Lindsay is somebody who inspired me to be a vocalist at a time where I was, you know, in a shadow calling and um, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with my life at that time. But when I spoke to Lindsay, she gave me so much clarity and told me Aww. something that I already knew, which was you can do this and yeah. minded me somewhere deep in my soul that I needed to do this. I needed to be a metal vocalist because whenever I would watch performances, whether it be, you know, vocalists on stage, I always saw myself in that person. And mm -hmm. I was talking to Nathan about this and Mario the other day. And I was saying, guys, like, the moment you became a musician, there must have been a time where you were watching that musician on stage and you saw yourself in that person. And you saw yourself holding the guitar, you saw yourself playing the keys, you yeah. saw yourself holding the microphone. And mm -hmm. with every vocalist I saw doing growling and screaming with the faces and the, 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 the animating and all that stuff, I was like, that's me. I yep, see, you know, and I just knew. And mm. maybe at some point in some lifetime that I was in before I got here, maybe that was what I needed to evolve into in this lifetime. And I know it because whenever I talk about it, I always feel like the butterflies coming. I always feel the passion in my soul. I always feel like I, I know that's what I'm supposed to do with my life. And I know that I'm destined. And whenever I talk about back in open air, whenever I see the show, whenever I see the people and I see the smiling faces and the tears on their, in their, in their eyes, I mm. always picture myself standing out there and looking like out into that audience, like an ocean. And mm. I picture them going nuts. And I know that I have a connection with an audience that is almost like, it's just, 
It's just us and them. And yeah. I feel like I resonate with that so much that yeah. when I told you that and you said yes, that was when the lights really went off. And I mm -hmm. said, this is what I need to do. <laughs> and <That's> cool. <laughs> really, really cool. Literally months later, everything just started falling into place. That's One crazy. One thing after another just started happening and it started manifesting. And, mm -hmm. and even just the making of this album was the most beautiful experience of my life. And I have mm -hmm. to say, because, like, I have to say, like, these guys, I love them so much. Oh, like, your band members? Yeah. So like, met... like, Mario, Nathan, man, like, those guys, those guys are my brothers. Mm -hmm. and... Good. You're lucky you have a band that's, like, family. That's yeah. good. Um, but, you know, those guys are awesome. Mm -hmm. And we have, like, the same, like, energy. <laughs> And that's why yeah. the music just comes together so well. All of the ideas just work together so well. Yeah. And that's why this album is a lot special. of thought in it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I just wanted to say, like, thank you. Oh, like, no, of course. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I got thank you. Thank you for being part of this. Like, thank you of for being course. part of this album. Because yeah. it is really like this album and the next album and the next album and, and so forth is really just small pieces of the bigger picture and um, yeah i know you have a big plan for this <laughs> band in the future and all your visuals and if you don't mind me going back um it'll say thanks again for having me on this song i'm super stoked about it i can't wait for everyone to hear it that you're saying like you know you'd see people on stage and you'd be like that's who i am and i just recalled something i don't know maybe i'm supposed to tell this story but the, how powerful the law of attraction is and um i don't know i'm sure some people here have worked in fast food and a drive through at some point and um for most places when you work in the drive through you have like a headset and a little voice a little wireless voice pack and i worked at tim hortons that's a canadian coffee shop for those who don't know <laughs> uh kind of like a mcdonald's but not really and um I worked there for two years and I funded my old band's album the whole time I was there. I worked night shift. And on my last shift, I actually got a job at a music store. So I was leaving and on my last shift, uh, my boss handed me my headset and my wireless pack. And I said, the next time I put one of these on, I'll be on stage. And then I think I was 23 and then I have to do math. Four years later, I was handed a wireless set to go on stage with Cradle for the first time in Mexico City. So if you believe that, it's like, if you tell yourself, like, no, next time this, it's going to be like this. You set, you set that bar, it, it, you will get there. So it was kind of a crazy remembering that moment, you know, unreal. That's so amazing. I, <laughs> I, I think I experienced something like that too, where I was working in radio and I kept on saying to myself, like, I want my shows to feel like I'm performing at a live show. Right. When I hold this mic, I want to be the front man. And yeah. I just remember sending my demos a lot out to like radio stations and they were like, you sound like you're putting on a show all the time. Why do you always <laughs> sound like you're putting on a show? Here's a big personality. And I was like on it. And they were like, you need to tone it down. You need to tone it down. I was like, no. no. <laughs> I was like, this is me. Like, this is literally me. Like, I'm not. Yeah. Putting, I Like, if you think I'm acting like Macho Man Randy Savage or whatever, it's just me. Like, I'm yeah. just, I, I'm, I, I literally am this excited right now. Mm -hmm. I literally am. Like, because I'm always having fun. I'm, I, it's like, I understand, like, you know, trying to sound personable like is like we can do this right down right now and we can and i can sound like we're having a normal conversation but in the mm -hmm. radio business would be like no you just sound like more like casual you know and the one thing i can say is like if anybody is trying to douse your flame it's usually because i feel like they're just intimidated by your energy and i i think i got the end of that story rogers is trying to call me to sell me a new phone oh, and I, fun. Miss, I missed your last sentence there i apologize <laughs> I, I was saying that if somebody is ever trying to tell you to tone it down, it's probably because they're intimidated by your energy. And, oh, yeah, I've been there for sure. And it's, yeah, I, and it's like people have done it to me in super mean ways. Like, it's, it's like, 
well, I mean, I've dealt with enough narcissists on my, my earth walk, but like, if, if you're just filling up the room with your awesome contagious energy, some people will say like the meanest shit to you. And like, you know, when, when you're younger and you don't know how to defend yourself, like you just kind of like take it to heart. But as you get older, like now I'm just kind of like, try me, like try me, you know? And you also have to surround yourself with people who, who understand you and get you and support that side of you. Like I can say with like the, pe the, the people I'm closest to, they know what I'm about. They know what they're going to deal with and they're totally fine with it, you know, and anyone who doesn't get it, like they're not your tribe, you know, but I know you were going along your journey and you were like, this is who I am. And you were just in this, those places and situations because people just didn't, they didn't get you, you know, and now you are, you are in a place where it's like, I can just be Alex and like, I, 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 I've never felt more at home like Good. in this situation because I, I think that like this is and and even now like now I you know I I think that everything like negative experiences are not something to resist because friction is if anything what kind of creates more friction and when you're in a negative situation and from this book the sculptor in the sky there's like really good advice on this which is like something negative is steering you in the right direction. Like a negative experience is something to accept because acceptance is really what your teacher is going to be. Because yeah. if we look at a negative experience and, and something that Teal said really resonated with me was um, you're kind of like an instrument where mm -hmm. if you press the A note, then you're going to get A. If you, you can't press the not A note, you're just going to press A. So if I say, mm -hmm. I don't want to be in an abusive relationship, you're going to get it because you're just pressing A. <laughs> yes yeah, or like no you're, is, is, you're is attracting it. Yeah. So instead of pressing A, press G. Mm -hmm. Just say, you want this note instead. Instead of saying, I don't want this, I want right. this. Right. And that really resonated with me. And mm -hmm. if you're on the wrong vibrations, if you're forcing something, you're an instrument that's out of tune. And when you're Absolutely. playing notes that are out of tune, then you're going to get a weird sounding song. That's not going to sound very good. And yeah. if you want a beautiful song, then you need to play beautiful notes. You got to play notes that resonate with you. And, and sometimes you have to play that music alone because yeah. like, there's going to be a time where you're going to be around people and they just don't understand it. They don't get it. You know what I'm saying? I've and been in places where I've been on a life walk where what I was doing was not serving me it was serving other people and let me tell you that that's a very like empty life walk it's a very like a shallow place to live in so I understand with what you're talking about for sure yeah and you know when you're dealing with people that don't necessarily resonate with you I find that the, the thing that works the best is just accept them and say that's cool like that's yeah that's kind of a thing recently I had um, a bit of a disappointment I found that someone close to me is not being very honest and I'm like I can be mad at them or I can scorn and scorn them or I can just be like okay well you're going through something you're still growing and like I just have to accept you the way you are and just that that's that you know you, you get to a place of maturity because so I used to be like the minute someone pissed me off and just do something super shitty, I'd just like cut them out of my life entirely. But like you were saying with lessons, like sometimes there's a lesson to be learned there. You know what I mean? So Yeah. Right. And I, I, I think that like, it's so easy to just say like, you know what? Like screw that guy. He's a macaroni sandwich and I don't want to talk to him anymore. But like, I think that what we <laughs> Who doesn't do like macaroni is... sandwich? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. Some people are just macaroni sandwiches. Like, dude, like, just Where put it you? in the bowl. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it, it's like, I, I, I think, like, with every negative experience, it's always, like, there's a lesson to be learned. And, and it's so easy yeah. to let something rule the day. Like, when something goes wrong, I, at one point in my life, I'd be like, you know, it's kind of like, and, and this is kind of like a thing from The Secret, where it's like, you stub your toe, then you fall down the stairs, and then your house catches on fire. Like, it's... That's a bad day. That's, <laughs> that's a, a really bad day. Bad day. Yeah. It's a bad yeah, day. Shit. Nobody wants to be on the phone with the insurance company for seven hours. No um, one. So Not even five minutes. <laughs> not even, right? Like, yeah. seriously. So instead of that, like, you know, it's like, you know what, something bad, something happens, it's like, hey, what, what can we learn from this? It's like, 
You know, yeah. today like, I was trying to go to my class, like my online class, and the server was down. I'm like, oh, I got yorked. And I was like, well, I'm not going to let this ruin my day. Like, yeah. we're just going to, you know, come back when it's time because regardless cool. of whatever needs to happen. It's your mindset. Like if you have more of a positive mindset, you see it from a problem solver's perspective and you're like, okay, I accept this the way it is. Can I fix it? No. Okay. Then I'll try to fill my time with something else or I'll just walk away. And like, I think my biggest lesson right now is trying, like they say you can only help people because you have to come down and meet them where they are. You know what I mean? You're working up the mountain of self help self-development and there's people down at the bottom of the mountain and it's like you have to go you have to go all the way back down the mountain and that's where like I don't have a lot of patience is for people who haven't developed like a positive mindset yet and they all they do is they're super negative and they complain all the time and they are kind of the author of all their own problems and it's like to like it's teaching me right now to have a lot of compassion you know but like a year ago because I was still working on me I probably wouldn't have had that patience for others but I, I did sponsor someone most of this year someone close to me just if they ever needed to call because they were going through therapy and that was a huge like that taught me a lot about um unconditional love you know and and like if you really love someone whether it's a friend or a family member or a partner there's there's nothing there's nothing attached to that there's no attachment which is crazy because people think that love is attachment but i think true unconditional love actually is you feel something for someone but there's no expectation you know maybe that's just a millennial problem i don't know but (laughs) but yeah absolutely sorry i went on a tangent there (laughs) no no like we're we're all listening we all we all love learning from you that that that, that's why i call you my mentor because i learn so much from you (laughs) even even when you don't even it's kind of like because i'm old and i've experienced some shit well, I don't know. Like, like to me, you're just like you're you're the fairy goth mother, and I'm just learning from you because, like, just, like, even even in the times, even like when, like, you know, just just since I met you, like, you've always set a great example. And Very sometimes, well, you didn't see me on not... some Friday nights around town. I don't know if I was a good example then, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But, like, it, I'm kidding. Like, I'm but... kidding. God, I have not. I have not a party <laughs> night out in. I don't even remember sometime in my twenties and I'm like five years into my thirties, technically six. So. Well, I'm six years into my twenties <laughs> and regardless of age and regardless. So of, young. I hate you. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's, it's like, uh, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, dude, I'm just figuring things out. Right. You're, great. And, You're the same age I was when I got my first big break. Um, yeah, you've got like, and I don't mean to be like condescending and wish any bad upon you, but you got a lot ahead of you. There's a lot of, I'm, there's a lot life has to teach you, but it's going to be great. I mean, what I'm better excited. way to learn about per- perseverance, resilience and suffering than being in a band? Like, boom, <laughs> all your life lessons sorted. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think that it all comes with accepting it for what it is and, and going with it because really the experience of however you learn things or however you go about things is really what you make of it. And And I I think at this point, we don't have an excuse. Like if you want to have a career in music, there's enough people out there to communicate with and mentor with. And you, you'll know like who you should and shouldn't work with, especially within your genre. Like there's really, there's no excuse, you know, like, yeah, I started a band when I was 15 and I didn't really start getting it right until my mid twenties. But it's like all the resources are out there for you to be successful in whatever you want to do. Again, you don't have to be majorly famous, but you can be successful and sustainable. And it's like, we have no excuse not to be, especially in this day and age, you know what I mean? So right. it's, it's kind of like, everyone's like, oh, I'm just trying my best. And I'm like, yeah, and that's fine. Yeah. Like <laughs> you're doing your best, you know, just make sure you like read some books and go to school and stuff. Absolutely. It, like, how it's, hard is that? <laughs> it's, it's, it's read the books and do the thing and don't be afraid to fail because you're going to. And just, just go, like, just try. Well, that's the thing. Like, Alex, you don't know, like, like, you know, you're like, oh, you're very kind with your compliments. And you're like, oh, you're such a good example. But like, dude, I have failed so much in my 20 year career. I, I am the most screwed over person I know. Like I have taken some shitty deals and I've, I've had people steal and take credit for my work and, 
I've done like, like there's like people see, it's kind of like the iceberg. Like they only see the beautiful part glistening in the sun, but underneath it's like this anchor, the foundation of just like hours of screwing it up and like, failing and like just disappointment after disappointment I think I've had two disappointments today but it's as you get older or experienced whatever comes first um usually age let's be real uh you know you you start seeing these disappointments and it's like literally I told I was I was on a voice message with my best friend today and I'm like I just need two minutes to sit in this disappointment and then I'm gonna get up and finish these tasks (laughs) because it happens all the time but you just learn how to like digest it. Like, I mean, the best advice I always give to young, young people or first time creatives or entrepreneurs is just never be discouraged by setbacks because it's just, it's like you said, there's a lesson it's teaching you something, but there's something on the other side. So yeah, like I, like a lot of people don't know, like my first EP, I lost three producers before my buddy Sean took me into his studio. Like I had set three producers like one after the other just bottomed out on me bailed on me didn't understand my direction and it was like it was like man I'm like is my first EP like ever gonna come out and this is like back in 2011 but you know it's like anyone you know who is super successful you know or famous or whatever whatever they've they've done built a legacy there is so much that didn't go right for them and a lot of the time they look back and they're like, well, I'm glad it didn't work out because it led me in this other direction. And that was like amazing. And I'm happy with where I am now. So, I mean, you can apply it to life, but yeah, (laughs) don't put me on a pedestal. The pedestal's on fire and one of the legs are broken. Okay. And and that's okay. But that's, that's (laughs) the reason why I admire you so much because it's not about accomplishments. It's about the fact that you are just so genuine and so real. No, and no, that no, is no, what no. I look, and that is what I admire so much about you. Because regardless of whatever, like you know, how successful you are, you always carry yourself so genuinely, so honestly, and you're so down to earth. And I strive to be like that. Yeah, and geez, man, you're halfway there. <laughs> you're more than halfway there. You're okay. Um, and, and and that's the thing, right? Because to me, I'm like, whatever happens, happens. Failures happen all the time, but it's not going to stop me to, from going for where I need to go. Yeah. Because the destination is the destination, but the journey is a beautiful thing that we need to fully embrace. And yeah. I always tell that not only to my guys, but I tell that to even like just people I know who are also fellow entrepreneurs and like mm-hmm. regard and, and I am very close to a lot of entrepreneurs. Like my mom is an entrepreneur. Like my, my parents yeah. are both entrepreneurs. Like yeah. um, you know, and they, I've experienced, you know, their failures. I've experienced mm-hmm. my friends' failures and successes and my parents' successes. And I've yeah. experienced, you know, I, I know I'm 26 and I have so much to learn, but I feel like I'm heading in a direction of where I want to be. So I'm going to stay mm-hmm. true to that direction and whatever it takes it, whether it means I have to fall down and get a few bruises and a few bumps and a few cuts, whatever, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. I know where I want to go. And I know That's that good. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get there because and you're, you're already successful. Cause like, honestly, especially in my industry and the business people I work with, like, I think we'd all collectively agree. We have more respect for people who try and fail and learn than people who just never do anything at all, you know? And I, and I'm not knocking my home city, maybe a bit, not really, but like where I come from, there's like there's a lot of talent there's a lot there's a lot on on so many levels and only like two percent of us get out because you know it's situational for the other maybe 98 percent but none of them actually try to like get it done from beginning to end you know like finishing an album or putting out their product or starting their business because they're too scared and it's like i I understand we all we've all kind of been there before we start something but it's like if you tried and you failed I have way more respect for you than if you just never tried at all and like like when people come up to me and they're like oh I was gonna do this and, blah, 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 and I'm just like well, where is it they're like I never did it and I'm just like I don't want to hear about it <laughs> it's like, like you know, either do it and come tell me about how it worked or it didn't but don't tell me about what you never planned to do like that is a waste of time energy magic like no <laughs> exactly and I, I i think that it's like 
you know, something I learned from CJ, you know, CJ Ortiz, the metal motivator. Um, <laughs> I love CJ. I miss that guy so I love much. CJ. He's <laughs> so inspiring. Um, you know, he has this really amazing saying that really stuck with me, which was mm -hmm. whenever somebody says easier said than done, it's the equivalent of flipping on the light switch and all the cockroaches running away. It's a coping mechanism for yeah. somebody who doesn't want to acknowledge that they need to do something because their higher self is calling them to do something. And their, right. so, their ego is so afraid of failing that they need to mm -hmm. hide behind easier said than done. But yeah. you know, I, I have faced those things like in my early, tw my, my, er my late teens, early twenties, I have been mm -hmm. rejected so many times in different areas of, like especially the radio business because it's tough it's tough it's cutthroat and they don't want to pay you for it <laughs> no it's true and it's, yeah and i i hate to say this but there are a lot of situations where you meet people who have the poverty mentality which is something that i do not resonate with mm -hmm. and you hear a lot of that 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 bad self-talk where mm -hmm. they say you're never going to get paid this amount of money, you're never going to get rewarded for your work, and you're never going to get this, you're never going to be that, so stop trying and stop doing this and that and the other. Mm -hmm. And at some point, some of that energy may rub off on you the wrong way. Yeah. But I feel like my higher self never resonated with that. And I was always like, I want to be the world champion in this. I want to be the best I can be at this because I feel like I have something yeah. And, you know, I, I once, you know, and I, I once had somebody tell me, like, well, it's one thing to have a cool sounding voice, but it's another thing to be a great journalist. And I was just like, well, like, what are you trying to say, man? <laughs> that's that's the other thing, too. Like, I always preach about, you know, show up in your authentic form, be yourself, be the energy that you are, even if you just resonate with a potato. If you want to be the chill potato in the corner at a gathering, like, I respect the potato. But, um something that I did know that I did notice and I did learn the hard way was if you show up in places and you're, you're trying to truly be our authentic self and bring something good to the table, bring something good to the business or the musical project or other people's lives and they don't resonate with you and they don't appreciate you. And they're consistently entitled, complaining, negative, ungrateful, don't appreciate like everything going on around them uh, you know after a long time no matter how much you try to show up with your good intentions and your good light it will be like a poison and it will dim your spirit and hurt you um and you know like it just it's just proof that you can't make something work and I have so much respect for people who walk away from situations even if it was a better job or a bigger opportunity but they walked away because that environment was destroying them spiritually and mentally. Like, you know, it's like, I get it, man. Like it's, it's not worth it if you are harassed and abused and you don't know who you are and you're trying to bring something good to the table, but everyone's putting you down. And yeah, like, you know, just it, when Leah told me, my friend Leah from, if anyone doesn't know, she owns yeah. Savvy Music Academy. She's also an incredible musician. She said a quote and she said, go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. And it, at the time I was like, man, I'm really in an environment where I'm, I'm just being tolerated and I'm not being appreciated. And then I started to shift and uh, got out of that situation. I've been in that situation multiple times in many different scenarios um, that I, oh, I say scenarios. Is that how we say it in can Canada? Holy crap scenarios anyways sorry <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna say a word wrong sometimes anyways yeah and I mean that's also something to consider too because you can just like you know there's certain relationships you're in and it's like you can just show up and keep trying to be great but the person you're dating is an ungrateful asshole who doesn't appreciate you and you just have to walk away so I believe that yeah you can be transformative in your energy and where you show up but you also need to choose where you show up and if you're in an environment where Again, like I've said, you're not appreciated. Walk away. Like just, it's like you're putting yourself, like you are a lamb putting yourself in a cage of tigers, and it's just not worth it. It's it's not like go go hang out with the other herbivores. I don't know, vegan reference maybe, but you know what I'm saying. Like put yourself in environments that are healthy for you. Put yourself in relationships, work environments, bands, whatever it may be that are healthy for you, and you'll do a lot better.
you will for sure. Right, exactly. Sometimes, and I love what you said about walking away from some things because um, you're reading Light is the New Black, right? The book I recommended. Yeah, right? I'm on chapter, I want to say two, but it's already blown my mind because I sure, I'm sure you have something to say. Um, the author, Rebecca Campbell, she was talking about how she prayed when she was younger for bad things to happen to her so she'd have her story. And then like when she realized a ton of bad things happened to her, she like hated her, her maker or whatever. And then, and she's like, wait, I asked for this. And then I just thought about it. And I'm like, before I got my big break, I was like, come on universe, give me challenges. Like give me life experience. And then like years later, I'm just like, okay, okay. That was, that was enough life experience for 80 years. Like we done. But at the same time, I was like, I asked for this. Like I, I, I attracted this to my life. And let me tell you, like, I got a lot of advice and experience, but you know, like you can't be mad. Like what you ask for is usually what you're going to get. So I kind of, I was like, I was like, Oh, chapter two, just slap, you know, it was like, what do, what do they say? It's like, you got a slap from God and a hug from Jesus. Like it was, <laughs> it was rough. <laughs> it looks like, uh, give you a body slam and threw you over the top rope. That's what we've got yeah. wrestling reference. Hey, James. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I was going to say, and, and to your point about just like things you ask for, there's a, there's a chapter in it and it brought a tear to my eye because I resonated with it so hard because that, that, that book is the only book that's really made me cry. Oh, and wow. um, it that was the big leap. The big leap made me cry about fear of outshining others and how you did your life. But sorry, continue with, continue with Miss Rebecca Campbell. <laughs> there was, <laughs> there, there was a chapter that said, um, sometimes you have to just know when to walk away because doing something for so long, just because you've been doing something for so long, it doesn't mean you need to stay there. Oh my and God, when I read that, that hit me right in the heart because I felt like I was doing some things in my life just because I had been doing them for a long time. I was right. like, I've been doing this for so long. I can't just walk away now. And I feel like that just like stuck that, that, that resonated so hard with my personality because I am somebody who will fight to the death. I will fight mm -hmm. forever. <laughs> to make it work. Will, yeah. there, there, there are, there is a song on our album called the hunter's nightmare and the chorus is fight forever. And that is a wrestling reference and it's an Alex reference and it's a story. True. <laughs> because <laughs> it resonates with my personality so much because I'm just somebody who will not back down ever. Even if I'm being like, even if I know this is wrong somewhere and it's just the universe is telling me stop, I won't because mm -hmm. I want, I, cause I, cause I, I tend to get attached to things. I hold on to things. And I feel like that is something I needed to let go of. I needed to let go of that because well, it becomes part it. of our identity. We think it's like part of our identity, but it's like, that's like our, our, you know, what we, what we create our job titles, uh, if we're a mom or a dad or whatever, or a family member or a status at work, whatever it may be, we think like that's who we are, but that's not who we are. That's just like a title that this world has given us based on, what we put out there, but I know what you mean. Like there's certain things that I had a hard time letting go of, even though they were super toxic and not healthy for me. Cause it's just like, no, this is mine. I created this. Um, I want to make it work. Like it's part of my identity. It's like my whole career is based on it, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, yeah, but like, you're sick. <laughs> like, like, yeah, I mean, like you won't wear yourself to... into the ground. You know what I mean? Right. It's not worth it. Yeah. The question I needed to ask myself was, do I still love this? Right. And the answer was no. And it was hard for me to answer that to myself, but I had to be real. And I had to say, no, I don't. I, it's like, it's not that I didn't love doing the thing. Mm -hmm. It was that I loved something else more. <laughs> yeah. And I needed to let that I needed to make room for that. And the way the universe works is if you're holding on to things that don't resonate with you anymore, then you're preventing something else better yeah. from coming into your life. And so the minute I really accepted that and made the decision that I'm going to have more self-worth and I'm going to 
give myself the opportunity to become something more than I already was in that previous previous time and not hold my identity to somebody that I once was and start thinking about somebody that I need to become. That was something right. that started to resonate with more because I, one thing that really is amazing is like there, there's a book, 10 distinctions between millionaires and the middle class and it's a Great money book, book. Yeah. but uh, it's, there's, there's a, there's a, there's a chapter in the book where I always think about this. It's stop thinking about who you were and start thinking about who you want to become. And exactly. And so many I, people are terrified of that, but like, yeah, I love new beginnings. I love being able to mm -hmm. start over. I love starting new projects. I love jumping in on other people's albums. <laughs> Some people here know what I'm talking about. Um, it, but that's the thing, like, we always build it up in our head that it's this big, scary thing. But then when you actually get there and you do it, you're like, oh, oh, it's not so, it's not so bad, you know? <laughs> so right. that's at least that's what I've but I, I think that's beautiful what you're saying is like the person I want to become I mean I redefine that every year it's crazy yeah. it's, you know it, it you is. don't really ever stop evolving <laughs> right and 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 really the, the most amazing thing is that you can decide that you have to decide right now like it's it's mm -hmm. like and you can change your life in a second you can say I'm going to do this now and one action one thought becomes an emotion and that emotion becomes your action and that few that action leads to a world of changes like yeah i don't and, and one thing i learned which was the funny thing is i i think that like we kind of romanticize the idea of i was once this and now i'm this but mm. i stopped thinking like that because That's i used good. to think like that i you used like I you kind of throw some things out and you discard of some things still you yeah. but there's like bad habits or old beliefs that you kind of like you're like okay leaving these at the curb it's dissolve exactly. in the rain and go down the drain but you just keep kind of you know pulling in new stuff exactly like what you learn is going to teach you things and you can use those learning experiences to become the better person that you want to be today and then tomorrow mm -hmm. and for tomorrow and as cj likes to say all the time like if you want to predict the future just change your present yeah and, um you know I, I think that like sometimes like we like to romanticize like, oh, I was so poor and now I'm rich or I was once this and now I'm this. But I just I, said like I, I was poor in spirit, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. But I, I think that it's like so like so much more freeing to say who gives a shit about who we used to be? <laughs> like, oh, bless that girl. Forgive her. <laughs> like, like that guy was cool. Like. Yeah. Whoever needs to be cool, whoever, because like, I, I think that when it comes to our decisions, a lot of uh, like, like it was almost habitual to be like, how can I do this? If like my past dictates that I'm this. And I yeah. stopped thinking like that. And I started saying, it doesn't matter what my past said about me. It matters what mm -hmm. I say today, which is going to de determine what I'm going to yeah. be. tomorrow. Like if I say today, I'm going to sign up for driving lessons, no excuses then right. or I'll be driving. And mm -hmm. I think that like the reason why for so long, like I didn't have my license, which again, I don't want to talk about the past. Like, I think the reason why was because I never thought I could afford a car because I was always like, how am I going to afford this? This is so expensive. How am I going to do this? How am I going to do it? But I realized that the millennial truth, I was like, this, <laughs> I, but, so expensive. <laughs> but, but I, I, I realized it's not about the how it's about the what. The how, exactly. I, don't, I have nothing to do with the how. The universe does the how for me. Literally. I just decide the what. I just if I decided, the like, I could never afford a harp, I would never have afforded a harp. It's like what you tell yourself. It's like, okay, like, I, I'm going to have this. I'm going to find a way. I'm going to make the money. That's literally my mentality with approaching my career. And I'm like, I really want to do this thing. Oh, don't worry about the money. I'll figure out the money later. Do a crowdfunding campaign. Do a pre-order. You know what I mean? Like things right. like that. So I'm like, exactly the same like, way. The fans are going to show up and be sick about this. You know what I mean? But that's the thing. Like, like I mean, there have been times where with planning with Antiqua, I'll sit down and talk with Zen and he's like, I want this, this, and this. And I'm like, I don't know how we're going to find the money, but we'll figure it out. I, I think with, with, with my band, I, with, with, with the blood of indigo guys, I say that I, I, I say this all the time. I say, guys, we're going straight for the world championship, and I say, and I look at this belt. Oh, here we go. Every morning, I look at this belt <laughs> and I say, this is the world heavyweight championship. This is the most prestigious championship 
And yeah. I look at it and I say, this is this is what I represent. I love your motivation. I hold, the, I hold this belt. I look at it and I say, that's me. I'm the world champion. And regardless Aww. of who we're going to get there, we're going to climb the ladder. We're going to retrieve the championships. And we're going to be the world champion. We are the Dark Fantasy Medal World Tag Team Champions. And we're getting real that. belts made. We're getting okay. real belts made. Like, like I we're going to purple strap it's going to have the big hand on it and we're we are, i already found a designer and this is from a book called the culture code by oh, daniel i have Taylor. to read that one i this haven't book, my next one's 10x and then i'll read that oh, one 10x is an amazing one too but the culture code is amazing and i'm going to mm -hmm. tell you this like <laughs> like that book is that book is responsible for why like i'm so hyped with the guys and yeah. there's some amazing advice in that book about how to approach a team meeting. And it's when you show up, you are the, you are the tag team champions and we're in this together. And like, he makes so many great examples about like how, um, so he's talking about the basketball team, the San Antonio Spurs, how um, they were in the NBA championship and they lost, but right. their coach, um, I forgot his first name. His last name was Popovich. He, instead of, going back to the locker room and crying and being sad and like, Oh, we failed. And now nah, let's, you know, like, let's just take a moment to like be sad. Instead, they went to a restaurant and they celebrated as if they won. And they said, you know what guys, regardless of the result, I am still proud of you. And I still love you guys. And we are still champions to us. And yeah. we have so much to be proud of. Mm -hmm. And they had fun and they had a wonderful night. And that's because that is what a team is all about. It's all about coming together and celebrating that we did it and that we are here and we are celebrating a legacy. We're not it's celebrating beautiful. a single accomplishment. And, and, I, and I always tell the guys, I say, guys, we're in this because we're going to leave behind something that is bigger than ourselves. Angelus mm -hmm. is going to live beyond us. Like, yeah. And all these characters, I feel like we know them. Like, I feel like mm -hmm. I just, like, like we, like, like we've gotten to know them over the past five years. Like I, I feel like these people are like family, these characters that we made in our songs, like they're like family to us. And yeah. we always make jokes and memes about like, Oh, like Angelus is, you know, Anne, Anne Marie's with us. She's giving us the power, you know, like, <laughs> you know, Angelus is going to, you know, he's, he's going to be so cool. Oh yeah. Like, you know, we always make jokes about it and all that stuff because, you know, we, we, we play together, we joke together, we play game, like video games together. Like we're, you know, we're like brothers. We're like, we're like, we joke together. We play together. We have fun together. And, you know, this music, making the music is the accomplishment. And that's amazing. That's how it should be. be. Like, if you don't mind me interjecting, kind of going yeah. back to what the coach was saying. Um, it's like, they don't see kind of like how when I get nominated or win awards, I don't define my whole career and value and worth on those things. They're nice, but it's like, I, I define my worth on, you know, overcoming cancer, beating suicide, um, recovering, recovering from burnout. Those things are like, yeah, like I'm successful. And, you know, in, in a way, like when that, it was basketball, right? The basketball team lost, but they're still going out and celebrating. It's like, well, you have to, like you, you, you put in all that hard work, you know what I mean? And the other thing I want to say with your motivation to get out of bed every morning, I love that. I love where you find your motivation. And mine, actually, I wake up every day. And when I open my eyes, I'm just like, because I, I did have a cancer scare. I don't remember what year it was. Was it 17 or 16? Probably 7, 16? 2016. And we didn't know if we caught it in time. And every day I wake up and I'm like, I'm here. And that is sick. <laughs> like, um, I'm alive. Let's, let's, like come at me world what we doing today you know so like it, we all find it from different places but i just love that luckily you've never had to have any of those big challenges with mental health or um possibly dealing with like illness and what have you or burnout or anything but the fact that you've created your own motivation to be excited to get out of bed every morning i think that's really cool because i know especially during this pandemic big p word here we go um a lot of people have struggled with it but i I haven't because I'm just like, I have so much to give and offer and work on. It's like waking up every morning is like a gift. It's like, this is sick. Like I'm still alive. Like all of this would have ended if it, that tumor was actually malignant and spread throughout my body. I don't think I would have made it past 2017, but 
but I'm like, okay, I've had 18, 19, 20, 21. I've had four extra, maybe five. I don't remember. The, <laughs> I think it was 16. It was like, I've had four to five extra really sick years where I've done like some really awesome shit, you know? And I think that also comes with a gratitude practice. Like I could talk this stuff all day, but if you lack gratitude, it's just like an insult to like your entire being, your life, everything you do. Like when you show up with gratitude, shit just works. <laughs> it does. You know, it's, it's a really easy practice too. And even if you don't nice. believe it right away, it works. I wake nice. up every single morning and I say, I'm grateful for my friends. I'm grateful for my family. And I'm grateful for everything that I can contribute to this world and everything that it's given me. And mm -hmm. You know, I just keep on saying thank you over and over again in my head and on paper. And when I look outside my bedroom window and I see the beautiful sky and I, and, and you know, I, I think that gratitude is the most amazing thing in the world. And there is so much to be grateful for. And I, I also want to say, I'm, I'm grateful that you're here because you have inspired me and so many people to be the best version of themselves. And I love you so much. Oh, uh, dude. And, uh, I mean, some people listen, some people don't. I also just want to shout out Val Knox. She's in the comments. Val was in my first band ever when we were, what was it, 15, 16, 17. Val, I think I met you when I was 18. So this is, can I, can I tell you a crazy story? And I'm still so grateful that Val's in my life. She's in Blackhead Attack, the anti-queens. She's like super, I, I love her voice. She's so talented. Of course. it's close to dying i met val and along in the quaid this is like a universe moment and i'm actually going to be working with val on something soon again and we met in the music store and she had like this i don't even know val if you were wearing a vest or a leather jacket but all i remember was your sunglasses and your super crazy liberty spikes and she's like just eyeballing this beautiful guitar as she should and i walk up to her and he's like are you in a band and she's like no i'm like do you want to be in a band and i had to like we didn't have, like, maybe we had a Nokia cell phone back then. I don't know, but this was, like, 2004. So I had to, she told me her email. I had to remember it. Like, I had to memorize her email. It was the decline27 at, I don't even remember the end of it, Val, and I'm not going to try to, because if that's still your email, I'm giving your email to the whole internet, and that's not cool, man. That's not confidentiality. <laughs> <laughs> and I ran home and I emailed her and she joined my first band and we played Warp Tour and it was like the just it was all meant to be but you know it, as time went on we all changed Val is <laughs> Val is doing is still in kind of like punk and rock and all of that and I'm over here doing the the professional sad girl thing <laughs> 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 I thought Val would appreciate that oh not it's a junk so email good. now okay well I'm still not going to give the internet your junk email Val but I think that's just such a cool story because it's like, we're still in touch and she's extremely successful in what she does. And, you know, Val never stopped working hard either. And, and I'm really proud of you, Val. So that's like another person out there, but yeah, it's like these weird things happen and you just look back and you're like, Oh man, that was a hot minute ago. Like, but the, the idea of like, I don't have a smartphone. I had to memorize someone's email. Like our smartphones have made us so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> crazy yeah yeah well, that's amazing i'm glad you're here val nice to meet you um, <laughs> there, there, we have so many friends in here we have so so val is here uh we have uh the big bad she wolf is here and she's been uh commenting a lot uh, i love you too and brandon's here hey brandon and brandon's here well we, uh, we have send senderitz from indonesia Lucas MacArthur, hello. Lucas, what's up, bro? North Nick. Yeah, that's what I, I tell my work group in university. Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> I love what people are saying here. Curtis is here. We have a lot of really cool people here. Nathan's, Nathan's here. here. Nathan's here. We got so many amazing people. We got Rick here. Um, wow, this is Hey, awesome. Rick. <laughs> yeah, it's been a really good chat. Time. It's been really, um, really cool. Yeah, this is, this is so awesome. Um, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, you got uh, uh, Lucas is really enjoying this. Lucas is okay. from the band Solaris. I, now, since we're shouting out friends, uh, Lucas is from the band Solaris. He's a really good friend of ours, um, and he just sent me um, his 
band t-shirt and it's like the Mario Party logo with like all of his band members on it. And he also that's sent so me cute. a Bloodborne comic. Um, oh, my that's favorite cool. video game adapted to a comic and it's like the coolest thing ever. Um, and it, it came with a really nice note. So Lucas, man, Aww. you're the best and I love oh, you, bro. Dude. And I hope we can hang out <laughs> soon. Um, Nathan, you're here. You know how much I love you, bro. Um, we both love you, Nathan. You're one of my best friends, bro. And I know we're going to do great things together, man. Um, and Believe I love it. you so much. And I love Mario too, but he's probably working. <laughs> so probably, I hope, yeah. Or he's I, know, I know he'd be here if he wasn't, so. I, I, I'm sure that, uh, I, I'm sure he would be. But yeah, I mean, um, wherever you are, Mario, I want to let you know, bro, that I love you so much, bro. And you work so hard and you have so much passion. And I know that you're going to do great things. And you are one third of a dark, you guys are the two thirds of the dark fantasy world tag team champions with me and we're gonna have belts and we're gonna be out there at Bakken someday we're gonna hold those belts up as the pyro goes off people are gonna be like we had a wrestling show or we had a metal show i and can't wait for your first show because i'm gonna be there and i'm gonna be like the nervous mom i'm gonna be like so excited for you but like so nervous like oh man it's his first show like oh man just give him universe give him energy he can do it like that was like when well, we all know who Elle is from Blackbird Music, but she was in the band Darkstone Crows, and they had their biggest gig at that time opening for the Birthday Massacre. And I'm, like, front stage, and I'm like, oh, please let them be okay. Don't, like, don't let anything go wrong. So I feel like I'm, that's going to be me at your first show. <laughs> <laughs> like, freaking out of the corner of the venue. And they're like, oh, my God. <laughs> Are but, you someone's you know, mom? But, kind of. <laughs> I, I think our first show will be awesome because I think, like, we have to sing Dawn of the Shaded World together. Oh, we, shit. I have to be on stage with you now. You're going to be... I did probably, this to myself. <laughs> you're, you're probably just going to be backstage and be I'll like... i my you... pants anyways. Great. Cool. <laughs> this is where some depends. We'll be on it together. And, 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 and I always... Whenever I picture our first show, I always just, like, picture, like... I, I, I honestly, I, I, I picture tears coming down my eyes because I just can't help it. I'll be um, there with Kleenex. It's fine. <laughs> I got you. It's going to be the most surreal experience ever because I feel like it's just going to be us and them. It's going to be us and the people because I've never felt right. so drawn to something before. And I feel like that is where I will be so in touch with my higher self and where I need to be. And I know it's going to yeah. come out perfectly because it's mm -hmm. just where I need to be. Yeah. And it'll be good. It'll be a bit surreal, but I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> it's going to be surreal, but I know I was born to do this. And mm -hmm. that's why I'm so confident that it's going to go well, because it's, it's going to be a beautiful moment. And I've even told the guys, like, we're not going to play our first show till we're ready. And you'll know when we're ready. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, that's kind of been our plan. We want to put out our best music first on the CD and, you know, do it the Savvy Musician Academy way where we want to build our fan base mm -hmm. online and then uh, play mm -hmm. shows and we have a fan base. And, yeah, uh, you will. By the way, I graduated today. Like Graduation! Finally graduated <laughs> from that school. I had to put, like, my last piece, like, I had to hit active on the last thing for emails and I'm like, oh, I graduated. <laughs> 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 it only took me three years. But y'all, like, I honestly, like, I, I thought about it. Sorry to interrupt. Um, I know you guys will do great with the savvy musician way of getting your name out there and growing your fan base. Um, but I, I hit the button and I was like, oh, that was three. That was three long years of business. I think 2022, I'm going to go back to school for music. I really... <laughs> thanks, pal. I, thanks, guys. You guys are so sweet. I really want to... I never completed my harmony or counterpoint for classical music. And I think that's where I need to go next, especially trying to keep up with all the talent in Antiqua. They're just like, yeah, I so, see, you know, dominant seventh here and then this modulation. And I'm like, I wrote the chords. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I, I can't, like, I can't keep, oh my God, our guitarist Fabian with all his jazz chords. I'm like, bruh, like, stop with the sus. Your susses are sus. Like, I am done. Like, so anyways, yeah, like, it's just, you know, it's like, I, I don't know, 2022, you're the tiger, my year, I'm like, I need change, I need the change. So, yeah. Oh, you, you can know, do absolutely anything you put your mind to, Lindsay, yeah. because you're brilliant. 10 minutes a day. Thanks, man. 
no, just literally 10 minutes a day. Like when people are like, yo, I want to do this thing. I want to learn this instrument. I want to start this hobby. And like, it's just like committing a time doing it. Like I, like literally I got my music education to begin with. Cause even though I was busy at the time, I still gave it 30 minutes a day. I'm like 30 minutes a day to study theory or play my instrument or sing, you know, and even when you don't feel like it, you have to show up. Like there's days where I'm like, I was so heckin' tired and I didn't want to play the piano, but I showed up and played all my scales. And then by like 15 minutes in, I was playing the classical pieces. And I was like, this is discipline. Discipline sucks. Like <laughs> anybody ever told you discipline is easy? They're lying. Like that is, this shit's hard. So yeah, I mean, that's, I, I really believe in car uh, compartmentalizing your time. It's like my secret weapon. Yeah, the, the best advice I got from John C. Maxwell, like, were one of the best things. He has so much good advice. Um, one of the most amazing things was, like, I just started doing this recently, was get a planner. Because yes. when I was a kid in 2004, I was in grade four. And <laughs> I just met Val and graduated high school. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was in Val, how four. old do you feel right now? <laughs> <laughs> and Halfway I remember to the people were like, all right, kids, so like, make sure that like, you write down your homework and your agenda. And I was like, no. Right. <laughs> I Because like, I, I, I think this might just be a creative type, type, type thing where I just don't want to write shit down and like, just like, I don't want to write down my homework. Like I'm naturally just like, I have it all here. And yeah, I think as you get older, me, everything here gets like, <laughs> Everything here just like expands, right? And like, it's like, it's like yeah. now you gotta allow more things to come into your life because you can't just do what you can't hold one pencil at a time. Like, it's, it's like, you know, I was like, cause in, in like, like I hate writing things. I hate write. I hated writing down homework. I was like, I don't want to write this down. I'll just remember what I have to do. It was like my stressful. It's like anxiety. Like when I, like for the longest time getting into planner mode, like when I'd write stuff down and be like, oh no. Oh no, but then I realized like having a plan puts your anxiety at bay. I was like, yeah, planning can give makes me anxious, but then when I do it, I'm not anxious. And I'm like, what the hell, brain? It's the idea because you know, when I started, like, it's, it's, it's really just like, it's a, it's, it comes back to our thing that we were saying earlier, like defining yourself on your past actions. Like, I never did this before. Well, now it's time to do it. And like, I just said, to, Cause like, I, I think that it comes with just like how you approach things. It's like, if you say we're going to do things like living in the present, I think really comes with it and saying very hard to do, by the way. Like, yes. It takes it's practice. taken me like 10 years <laughs> to figure because, out how to live in the moment. <laughs> right. It's like, it's like I'm, I'm getting it now, but like, I feel like just like the subconscious is kind of just always reverting back to old habits, which are like, you're going into idle mode where you're just like thinking of things that, you know, may not I, either. It's either like you're thinking of things that kind of put you in like this autopilot, but getting yourself out of autopilot is really helpful because mm -hmm. then you can just, it's hard, start, though. it is practice. Yeah. It's a lot it of takes practice. practice. And the first thing is really just like saying, okay, we're going to do this like this now. And, I started writing things down and I was like, well, now I'm getting things done because I wrote it down in the planner and now I'm just going to do it because I don't have to think so hard about what I have to do now and just focus on the doing. And now mm -hmm. it's not that hard anymore. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just one of those things that just like, it's, it's just, it just now things are just easier to do. Mm -hmm. So look at us a, adulting gold star, gold star. <laughs> we graduated, graduated adulting there. But yeah, no, it's very, very true what you're saying. Absolutely. It's, it's just one of those things that I, I guess uh, it takes time, but it comes with everything else, right? It's all habits. It's all, you know, bettering yourself and like choosing a growth mindset and, and, and saying today is what I'm going, today I'm going to do this. And what I do today is going to ultimately affect tomorrow. So I, I think yeah. that, I think that's all part of it, but well, I mean, the next two months are going to kill me, but I have them all planned out. I have my death, like, planned. Like, it's like, this is what you're doing on these days. These are your days off. This is when you can play on this person's song. This is when you can play on this person's song. You know, and that's how, that's how you do it. But I don't know. I mean, what do I know? I always, like, sometimes I'm just like, God, living with this creative mind is a blessing and a curse. And, like, I, you know, people are like, oh, how do you do it? And I'm like, 
like the exhausted flailing pigeon, like just eh, making it work, you know, like you just, you would just have to show up and try your best essentially. And like, exactly. it, that's, it, that's it. exactly it. Showing up and doing your best and just letting things happen and just accepting what happens and letting your, and, and even if it means that something else needs to fall apart first in order for something new to come out, that's why they say it's a Phoenix rising from the ashes, right? Because it's something mm growing from the old it's like in order or it's kind of like a painting it's like we already have like this painting of like this like of you doing something that doesn't resonate with you it's like okay we got to get the eraser out and like start again because now yeah, rebuilding and and this is the next this is the next chapter of life and this is where we need to go next so um that's mm -hmm. where it all comes together so i feel that with burnout the whole phoenix thing i have had clinical burnout and it's just like I tell you, man, trying to find your passion after that. I still haven't gotten back my passion for makeup. <laughs> like, I did it today, but I was like, why? You know, like, I'm just like, why am I doing this? But it's true, because it's like, if you if you just burn, my phone's reminding me it's at 10%. Um, if you just burn out on something, like, finding your passion again, it's really hard. But I, I think the most beautiful thing was, like, I didn't lose my love for music. Like, I... Even though I was really sick, I still picked up my harp and wrote that World's Away album, you know, and got through it. And everyone's just like, you know, because there's, there's, especially the people who knew they were a part of my burnout. They're like, you're not sick. You're fine. Like, if you were really sick, you wouldn't be able to do this. And I'm like, you ignorant turd, you know, that illness wears like many masks. But also they were like, kind of my abuser talking shit about me. So I was kind of like, well, that's your waste of time in life, like hating on someone else, like, good luck to you. You're clearly never going to build anything worthwhile because you spend it, on, you know, hating on other people and trying to bring them down. But yeah, when it came to burnout, it was kind of like, there was that one little like, it's kind of like the rising from the ashes. It's like that one little glimmer of light, that little spark in the coal. And it was just like, oh my God, I'm so glad I had that. Because I know some people they got burned out so bad, like they never found their passion again for the one thing they loved. And like, I can't imagine what that would be like. Like if I didn't have music or singing or composing, I don't know if I'd have much of a reason to live. I mean, there's potatoes, like there's, there's fried potatoes, baked potatoes, like, man, I, I freaking love potatoes, you know, like maybe that <laughs> would become my passion. <laughs> there's still reasons to live, but you really need that fulfillment and that joy and that contribution to the world and humanity at the end of the day. So I, I actually do, it's weird, it's strange that I actually do have a massive Phoenix tattoo on my back. And then when I came out of my burnout, I'm just like, yeah, bitch, like you is that Phoenix. And I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> like, totally <laughs> forgot. This is blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, just life is full of dumb founded moments. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, we all love potatoes and we love Phoenixes, so. <laughs> We can make like the next like album, Potatoes and Phoenixes. Like, um, that would be kind of cool. <laughs> I love how Val, like Val, would still fight for my honor. Val, that's why we're still friends. <laughs> that's why we were in a band together so long ago. Because Val's like, I will fight them. It's like, don't worry, Val. They ain't worth it. They ain't worth it. They ain't worth bruising your knuckles. You keep your knuckles beautiful. They ain't worth it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, goodness. Um, so, but yeah, yeah. You have, like you have so many cool things going on right now, and you're like on everybody's album now. <laughs> so like, yeah, um, kinda, like, whoops. <laughs> so like, so 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 like, what are so what are you up to with Antigua? Like, how how is that all oh, coming man. together? You have, um, so I think you have a surprise coming for us, like on Friday. Is it? It's like, coming tomorrow to the mailing list, and then yeah, it'll be public on Friday. It's a little cool extra thing that we're doing. It's very limited, and you'll see on Friday you can be a part of it. And you're also helping us do something, but you get something really cool in return. I don't want to say too much more. I'm going to totally spoil it, and then it's going to be like, you know. So luckily he's not watching. Um, <laughs> at least I hope not. A check. <laughs> You know, it's, it's okay. Sometimes I feel like the good talk who just spoils everything. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I'm I'm like the hype guy who doesn't can't keep his mouth shut. So yeah, antique was good, but really, what we're doing right now is we are we had a writing trip last month. We have another writing trip in Montreal in October, but finally our band members can fly over here, which is super exciting. Not all of them can make it, but some can. 
which is important. It's great. And uh, we, we're doing our best. I really want to get this album written before Christmas. Um, so that's like the goal. And then moving into just recording it all next year and releasing it when it when it's meant to be birthed into the world, you know. So it's been a labor of love. I um, There are no rules when there are rules because there's not necessarily rules to black metal, especially not with the production. But with with classical, there's a lot to consider. And we kind of just threw it all out. But in that process, we're like, wow, this song is a mess. And this song is a mess. And this song doesn't know what it wants to be. These songs are great. These songs are like, this is cool. You know, so we're just kind of going through that right now because sometimes I throw out the odd, weird classical piece and they're like, I don't think I can black metal this. And I'm like, okay, well, we tried. So, you know, it's it's one of those things where we're still trial and error because it's like our debut album and there's so much we want to do. And I looked at the recording schedule next year and I'm just like, man, kind of want to become an electronic artist and put out an album a month. Like, uh, that... <laughs> <laughs> that makes that makes more sense that that I can do that, but I, that's not hey, really just, my calling. You know what I mean? Ontario <laughs> and start making some Gino beats. Well, Yo, me and, my single, bro. It's so fire. Me and Fabian and Antiqua have a joke that we're going to start this synth wave project, and it's going to get bigger than Antiqua, and then we just use it to fund Antiqua. But we like kind of dead mouse it and keep our our faces hidden and like a Daft Punk thing, like nobody knows who we are. But like we have the time to do that. What is? Oh gosh, Val's telling me about life recording and writing together. A little essay. How many songs have you guys written? Have you guys all been recording and writing together from home? Uh, okay, so shame time. This is shame. <laughs> this is shame hour here with Lindsay Schoolcraft and Alex Blood Vindigo. Antiqua has been a band since 2015. We have written 11 songs. Some of these songs have been around for six years. It is what it is. Like, I'm, I'm over them. I just want them. Like, it's like when, you know, like, like my mom will understand this when the kid just won't leave the house and you literally have to kick them out. That is where I'm at with these songs right now. So if I understand anything about motherhood, that is the closest I can get to a freeloading child who just won't leave the nest. But <laughs> the thing is, like, we have been writing, but it's so big because there's, there's a band set up. But then there's like Four Beasts Medieval Choir, Gregorian Chanters, Horn Section, Strings church organ my piano me singing god knows what other stupid instrument we're gonna add you know so it's like it's massive and it's all live but the other the other shame bit is the fact that this band right this antiqua thing that everyone's like oh that's really cool i'm like you just say that because you're not in it um we've we've all never been in the same room we <laughs> We can't play any of our music live together, like, right now as it stands. Like, I, you want to talk about imposter syndrome? Like, hello, hi, president of the whole club. <laughs> it, it's, like, it's just madness. And I'm just, like, you know, when I started, when I was 15, I sound like an old lady now. I don't even care. And you told me the band that you would end up in would be this setup. I'd be, like, yo, y'all crazy. Like, especially, like... <laughs> He told 15 year old me I'd be in Cradle of Filth. I'm like, I hate that band in high school. Like, why Why would the universe <laughs> give me Cradle of Filth? It's just like, I don't want this. Why did you give me this? I digress. <laughs> I'm still grateful for the whole thing and I hope they're doing well. But what yes. I'm saying is, is like, you look at things and you're just like, if, if I sat down 15 year old me in front of me, she'd be like, I don't know if she'd be proud or scared or confused to meet me probably mostly confused because she'd be like that was not the plan we had for our music career and I'm like I know but we making it work so late but yeah no with, with Antiqua I just look at Antiqua and I'm like this makes no sense but I'm very happy <laughs> <laughs> you know it really doesn't matter how long it takes for something to happen it comes out when it's ready like some some babies have to hang around a little longer you know um, yeah. Some kids have to drink some more Mountain Dew and eat some more potato chips and play some more video games and hang out in mom's house for a little longer. Yeah, you know? exactly. And, I'm going to plug in my phone and be stealthy and, about it. <laughs> and, and, and that's okay. You, it's allowed to go whenever it's ready. And we recorded one of our songs, the very first song on our album in 2017, like 
five million times. And one of the reasons why we re-recorded it was because originally we were using Pro Tools and Pro Tools stopped working. So we got oh, no. Studio One and had to record the no, entire song again. Studio One's and, my bro. I love Studio One. And Studio One is, is, is actually really cool because like it's like, it, it, and, and, and it's cool because Mario likes using Studio One, Nathan likes using Logic, but they both are kind of similar. So they both use, so they both use yeah. Studio One. Um, because Nathan does like, so the production that we do is kind of like, like Nathan does, um, he does more of like vocal stuff and like, uh, orchestra stuff and like, um, uh, more of like the bells and whistles kind of things like on his end. And then Mario does like the fundamental, like guitar, bass and drums, like let's get this to sound huge type of stuff. So like then they both kind of merge together on Mario's computer (laughs) And then they start mixing together, and then I'm just like, it. "Hey, like, why don't we like do this?" And they're just like, "Cool." And like, <laughs> it's kind of like we all kind of work together. So like, as time's kind of gone on, like, I think like we've all kind of become like producer. Like, I'm not a technical guy, but I'm an ideas guy. Like, There's I'm nothing wrong with that. Yeah, and ideas is good. Visionary is like, good. Like that's very much <laughs> like like when it comes to like motif and it comes to like. Uh, storytelling elements like there's a, there's one song that is like it opens with voiceover with me and ends with voiceover and then there's like a soundscape of like a guy whipping a sword and then like like starting a flame and Sick. and like it's a song called novice pyromancy which is the, the shortest song on the album but it's a song about resisting education and i think that it comes from a place of like when I wrote that song, I was in a very frustrated place where I felt like I wanted to grow, but mm-hmm. I felt like I just needed to become this thing. But I felt like the wrong people were giving me the wrong advice. Oh, and yeah, I've been there. <laughs> and I felt like that's that's really what that song is about. The lyrics are, there's nothing you can teach me, just let me find my spark. And yeah. that's, I keep on repeating that over again. And it's like that song is a very deep song with a very simple message and there's a lot of atmosphere and stuff like that and it's a very it's very much like it's very fast and in your face and everything happens at once it's it's probably a song it's the most i would say probably the most uplifting song like the most melodic song maybe one of the most melodic songs i don't know there's a lot of them like you heard Dawn of the Shaded World today, and that's probably the most emotional mm-hmm. song other than Corpse Bride. And Corpse Bride Yeah, sounds- the outro is beautiful. I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Nathan. Good job, me, Nathan. Damn, got me in the heartstrings. Jesus me, me and Nathan were listening to that, and we were, and, and Mario as well. Actually, Mario had some amazing, like, so the thing is, Mario had the idea of putting in those choirs. And then Nathan mm-hmm. and I were sitting down, and he was making the piano section. I'm, we were, like, inspired by the game Hollow Knight. And I was like, this sounds like the video game Hollow Knight. And he was like, yeah, bro, like, let's, like, let's do this. And it came together so well. And it just, that outro was just beautiful. And, like, it'll just bring a tear to your eye. There are so many moments on this album where it'll, it'll really connect with you emotionally. There's a song called Corpse Bride, which is... It's like I love it sounds. That like, movie. <laughs> it, it's, it, it sounds like a Tim Burton movie. The the the, the, the song. I'll I'll uh, I'll I'll send you the album when it's when it's done, um before anybody else gets to hear it. Um, but I know when 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 the people watching when you guys hear this album, this song is. I I, I thought about this today. Like this album sounds like intimate. It's an intimate experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's something else for sure. From what I've um, heard. Yeah, and. Uh, and Corpse Bride is a, is essentially it. It's about a guy who's going back to reunite himself with his dead wife. And, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a very beautiful song. It's a very angry song. Um, but it's like, it sounds like a horror movie. Like the, the intro literally sounds like Friday the 13th part two. <laughs> um, it's like the violins sound very scary. And then like, it's, it's like the song just like from the emotion, like, in the vocals like I, I just felt that song like so strongly when i was recording it and and, and just every song really I, I felt like i had to embody all of the characters um but i don't know i'm gonna ask you did you feel that way when you were listening to the song did you like the character song specifically did you feel like you were listening to like a character or something because i listen like 
Okay, this is really weird. I haven't told a lot of people this. This year, I've been producing a lot of music, co-producing, not fully producing, because I'm not an engineer. I'm not a mixer. But I know what I want. And I've been able to help some people through that process. And when I listened to your song, I really got lost in all the background elements. And I felt like every song that I heard, I felt like I was in a different movie. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so that's like or a scene from a movie I feel like because I don't know what happened and as a singer usually I do listen to the vocals and the lyrics first but because I've just been focused more on the music um elements this year I'm like ah vocals and lyrics like I've been doing this 20 years I I, I pulled a song out of my ass last night for Patreon don't worry guys it doesn't sound like it was pulled out of my ass but it was like it's a good you know it's like I'm happy with it but it just came to me I was like boom here's a song like this makes sense this is a story but anyways with that I I was kind of like I don't know why I just got entranced and I felt like I was in the soundtrack and I didn't really notice like what the lyrics were you know I'd have to go back and listen again to the vocals I was more just like whoa the robots are coming to eat me on that really happy song um so I guess in a way, like the music has its own character, I guess is the best way to describe it. For those who don't know who are here now, you can get um, th- uh, three free songs from Alex's band, Blood of Indigo. You just got to go to the profile, click on the link, right? You got it in the link. Because I've yep. said that before and then people don't have it in the link. And I'm like, well, I tried to help you. But... Yeah, the link, the link's in my bio. If you want to listen to what our music sounds like, just go to the bio, Three Days of Dark Fantasy Metal. We send you three songs over the course of three days. And these songs are like very, um, I guess like, like they're goal. really cinematic. Like it's really cool what you guys have done. So everyone should go check it out. Free music, Thanks. like what's the problem with free music? Like can't go wrong. It's a new listening experience. <laughs> exactly. Like, I mean, it's like yeah, we really want to give to the community, and I think that's what we want to do first. Is that mm-hmm. we want to our our intention is always to give. And Mm -hmm. we really want to serve our community because we feel like they've given us so much purpose. And this music. I feel that with my fans too. I know what you mean. Yeah. And the the music really does come from the heart because um, I I feel like even just like the storytelling stuff is like, I've always been an imaginative person. When I was a kid, I used to write a lot. I I did a lot of creative writing as a kid. I do now because I'm, I'm in, I'm in university for creative writing. And, um, I love to write stories and I wrote stories on all the mm. songs and all of the awesome. albums are all of the albums are a continuing story or kind of a small piece to the bigger puzzle. And mm. these songs are kind of all supposed to sound like they're from the same universe, but in a different place, kind of like a video game. It's like, if you're in, if you're playing super Mario, it's like you're in the water level. It sounds watery. If you're in the fireplace, it sounds fiery. If you're in the haunted castle, it sounds like a haunted castle. If you're, in the in mushroom the, place, it sounds mushroomy. If you're in the mushroom place, then it sounds like vegan, vegan catering. Um, <laughs> That's the dumbest thing I've ever said. <laughs> well, if it sounds mushroomy, I guess it would be pretty psychedelic. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like color, man. <laughs> I don't know, dude. It just kind of like resonates with my uh, soul, man. You're Sebastian, man. Let me tell you. Oh, it's like, Sebastian you know, the big God. universe and the big gig in the sky, man. It's just kind of cool, you know. Macho Man Randy Savage. Ooh, yeah, Slim Jim. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, but but I'm, I appreciate you letting me talk about this music so much because yeah, no um, problem. <laughs> I, I, I feel like because you're part of it, I feel like it's just a beautiful first full circle moment and um the song dawn of the shaded world is like the the lyrics i wrote so you know this is a very you know emotional thing for me to talk about because i always it it always it always brings back you know something that was part of me but when i wrote the lyrics to this song you know it was it was it was inspired by when my dog passed away and tessa was my best friend from when i was eight years old and um Mm -hmm. When I lost her, it was, you know, I, I really felt like, you know, the, the, the song lyrics, how can I lend you my soul? How can I bargain with time? You know, mm. it was about having to put her down and having to let her go because it was almost inevitable that I knew that we were going to lose her because she was sick mm. and she was, you know, doing all the things that animals do when they start getting sick. They start sitting yeah. in the corner by themselves. You know, they Not get feeling well. Excited. 
they get less excited about things. But, you know, the one thing that she always loved to do was always love to go for walks. And even just yeah. until the day she died, she wanted to go for a walk. Um, and I still remember that last walk with her. And I was just thinking about how much I loved her. And, um, you know, just I was so grateful for the time that I got to spend with her. And, um, you know, there and, you know, those lyrics, my lonely, the, the ones that you sing, my lonely soul fading in your arms, carrying me into the light. It's time to let me go. Um, and then I say goodbye, my angel. And I'm talking about yeah. her. Oh, I know. And, when yeah. you told me after, I think I just lost my other cat at the time when you told me. And I was like, I'm going to go cry now. The gear's yeah. here. He's giving you love and support. He actually just showed yeah. up at the best time. Hey, big gear. Thanks for being here. <laughs> A little um, monster. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then the story in the Blood of Indigo story is really about um, this guy um, who has a long history. There's going to be another album that's going to include him as well. But um, his name <laughs> like, I already picture. got five albums planned. You <laughs> better be ready for all this shit. I got, I got, guys, I got albums planned until 2035. Like, we are on it. Like, don't worry. We will never run out of ideas. This is Alex. This is how I picture your brain. Where, like wearing the little wrestling belt, there's this little stick figure that goes around your brain and has a beard and this and the belt. And he's just like, don't worry, guys. Ideas, you need ideas. I got ideas to like 2050. It's okay. We're good. It's all right. Where's the coffee? We need to keep going. <laughs> it's time to win the world championship. Literally. If you've got a problem with that, well, then you're going to deal with the world heavyweight champion, baby. <laughs> Literally just stick figure Alex in your brain just planned out all of your career and all your <laughs> albums like it's done like you're busy until you're 60 let me tell you like that Alex is on it <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah like you know the main character of the story like like one of the main characters there are two main characters one of them is the guy in the story that's that's the song that you're in um he's a character I made when I was like nine years old with two of my best friends who one of them is on this album. He's playing bass, my friend Lucas. Big shout out to so you. Cool. I love you. Um he and he's an incredible bassist. Like he is he he went to school for jazz bass and he is inc an incredible musician. And he's on this album, and it is such an honor that one of my best friends who I still see every weekend is on this album. Um and you know, uh this character I made, he remembers this character. His name is Caparillo, and I made him when I was eight years old. And he looks... Is he the faceless funny... guy? No, that's Angelus. Oh. I made him as an adult. And the why funny thing... Is call that... him... Why do you call him the faceless guy when he has such a good face? Like, you are mean. So are too mean. Mean. Yeah. mean. He looks so... like Keanu Reeves. Like, how... why are you doing that to all of us? Why? Lauren did, Lauren did an amazing... Our, our illustrator, like, Lauren... No! Lauren did an amazing job of designing him. I, I just gave her, like, make him look like this, and she basically painted exactly what was in my head. And she is just so incredible. Big shout out to Lauren. You're you're awesome. Lauren Tier. She's on uh, Instagram, uh, at Lauren Tier Art. Um, yeah, like, uh, that character, the funny thing is, like, that character, like, he, that, that character who was on the cover art, like, um, he's the guy who I made when I was, like, eight years old, and he is the rival to Angelus. Like they're two opposites. Like Angelus okay. is very, like, Angelus is very skeptical. He doesn't like people and he just like hates everybody, but he, but it takes really long to earn his trust. Caparillo is very childlike and he's very just like, you know, let's go do this for victory, for honor. And I'm awesome. But, reminds had, me of someone. <laughs> but the most awful things, but the most, but he has to endure the most awful things. He loses his wife. He loses his daughter. And, right he's fighting for his daughter who he believes is still out there somewhere in the shaded world that he's going to find her. And that's like his quest. He's going to find her. And Angelus is kind of just doing the dirty work of, of uh, the big bad and Marie Indigo and the main villain. Gotcha. But Angelus is also like, he also kind of finds his own independence and kind of finds his own way. And he's learning new things and he's kind of, and you're, I feel like he's a relatable character because he's somebody who is like the, he's just a big edge lord. Like he's just like, you know, <laughs> I'm not a conformist and I don't conform to anything and I'm just going to fight and I hate everybody. And then but I'm going to make sure I fold my fitted sheet absolutely perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you nonconformist with your perfect fitted bed sheets. He. <laughs> I'm just being. I'm just being a. Frick at this point, I apologize. <laughs> also, I like haven't really slept, so 
that's okay. Like, I, I, I hope that I'm keeping you alive in all of this. This is great. Like, you know, you asked me to do this. I agreed to this, like, eight weeks ago or something. And I'm just like, oh, we'll see how Lindsay is then. And here we are. And I'm just like, fucking fitted bed sheets. <laughs> 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 anyway sorry continue continue about but, the non-conformist I, I, I guess yeah like you know the the whole thing with the like the characters and all that stuff it just kind of like it's just something I, it's just somebody I've always been and I feel like I'm so connected to that I feel like that's just kind of how I express myself and it's like after I played the games like Bloodborne and Dark Souls like where like the bosses are named have like these elaborate names I was like, I want to name songs after characters and events and stories. And I want to make everything really deep and immersive. And I want to make this connect with people. I love and, how immersive has been like the marketing word for the past two years. Everyone's like, it's immersive. It's immersive. And I'm like, I'm going to slip mercy in the bathtub and say it one more time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I guess like, the but I'm here to give you your money's worth. Everyone uses that like immersive experience. And I'm like, shut up. If you just listen to the music. It is immersive. <laughs> well, I guess like, <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm going to start this. using the self-help marketing term, transformation. It gives you a no. transformation. Yeah, trans transform. I don't know. Marketing is hard, man. When you like, I thought I was brilliant when I was like, I'm going to use the word ethereal and put it in front of gothic metal. And then everyone started using the word ethereal. And I'm like... Well, it's an English word. It's not really that unique. I mean, it's not like I can patent a copyright on an English word and be like, it's mine. You know, it's there for the whole world. But no, sorry. Back to what you're saying. Well, I'm just being it, it's, a, it's a Google <laughs> search term, right? It's like, I, I think yeah. of it as like, like, what do we, like, like the one thing that's like, and this is for all you marketing kids out there. I'm going to tell you something. All okay? two of you here right now. All, all two of you marketing kids out here. If your genre is, I can't explain my genre. It's like, Progressive, blackened, deathened, Viking, macaroni and cheese, sausage metal. What the <laughs> fuck is that? <laughs> well, the people are like, they're like, no, we're not, we're not defining ourselves with a genre. We're not, we're not putting a label on it. It's so just it's modern a- metal. No, it isn't. <laughs> yeah. No, literally, you want to hear a great story? You know why we call Antiqua Chamber black metal? I was proposing all these ideas, and I was like, well, this is like. The string size is chamber because we're poor and we can't afford the whole orchestra. So <laughs> it's like, what about chamber black metal? And then Zen agreed to it because it reminded him of it reminded him of Poe. I was like, oh my god! <laughs> so that's how <laughs> Antiqua got our genre. That's but it's I cool. tried. <laughs> no, it sounds cool, but that Chamber of Secrets, like Harry Potter, and that, like that's the first thing I thought. I was like, oh, it's like. Don't say sh- don't say Harry Potter. He will be like, we're not that anymore. Forget it. I'm not associating with those fake witches. Like he will be so mad. You can't see this live stream. You can't repost this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's not nothing to do with Harry Potter, but but maybe not Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. But I still like but like Chamber of Black Metal. Like that's cool. Like if like I, I when I thought of dark fantasy metal for a micro niche. Hey, Leah, yeah. how are you doing? Um, you know, <laughs> I, I, I thought of it as, like, if I'm a kid in high school looking for music, because let's be real here, if you're looking for music and you're, like, looking for stuff, you're looking for Google search term. Dark fantasy. In my music. day, we went to the record store, and if the cover art looked cool, we bought it for $10. And if we didn't like it, we gave it to our friend or our siblings. You see, I guess those are, like, that, that's cool, but, like, <laughs> Yeah, and that's, that? I guess, out. like, you know, this is where the age gap comes, because I get that. I was there, like, in, like, the dying days of HMV. Like, I'd go there, I'd be like, look at the metal section, and, like, how many, how, there's, like, three columns, three whole columns of metal, oh, my God. And then, like, the whole other store was everything else. But then I was like, okay, like, let's go on the internet, and, like, let's there's go on metal YouTube. and then everything else. <laughs> And I don't know, maybe in 2004 when you guys were watching, like, much music and stuff, like, you know, I was watching much music, but I was watching YTV even more. And, (laughs) but a bit of both. But, like, mainly because my sister was watching much music all the time because, like, my sister is, like, 1987 and I'm 1995. Yeah, she's a year younger than me, so we, we probably would gel. So yeah, like I, I mean, you, you guys know. are like, like 
I mean, after my rule is after you turn 23, everyone's kind of the same age. Uh, so like, I, I, I guess like, you know, when I like in, in, in my mm -hmm. high school days, it was like, if you want to find something like you're probably going to Google stuff, I would like sit there and Google things. Like if I'm, if I'm like a kid in high school, like right now looking for stuff, I'd probably just like Google, like things I like metal, like, I don't know, like, uh, like ethereal gothic metal. Like if I was searching for this, like Death I, metal, like, 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 yeah, like there's gothic right. metal, symphonic metal. Um, if I yeah, want a certain yeah. feeling, like from the music, I'm gonna search that dark fantasy yeah. metal. I'm gonna probably like if we're the first band that comes up, and that's awesome. Um, like you know, that's the goal. But like, if if there's like you know another genre you're in or whatever, it might be like, uh, like or chamber black metal. Like that's unique and it's cool and it's like it's okay. a subgenre combining with like a unique word that describes something, right? It's like. It's like if you're Google searching th something, it's like you're searching for you're not searching like 400 different sub subgenres because if you are, you're probably going to get every other band that's been around for 50 years because there are other bigger bands that have that subgenre attached to them already. And I feel like we've gotten to a point in like metal where it's like every subgenre is taken by a bigger band, so they're going to come up first before you do. Yeah, if you put in gothic metal, like, I'm nowhere to be found, but I'm not really a forefather or foremother of that genre. But that's why it's important to kind of scale down to a niche, right? So then, you know. I Ethereal mean, gothic metal, well, Lindsay Skullcraft comes up. I don't think I invented anything unique, and that's fine. I'm just making music I like, and some people out there like it, and that's all that yeah. really matters. Well, well nothing day. is really unique. It's all about being innovative, really. Or poor. <laughs> poor and then innovative because you're poor, you know, but things change, obviously. The day we can afford a full orchestra, we'll be like, well. <laughs> no, well, you guys are doing incredible. You got, like, Funeral Crown is Seriously. awesome. Like, that song is Thanks, so man. cool. Thank like you. That was actually the Bastard song. That was, like, the song I didn't like at all. I don't know why. It was, like, like Funeral Crown, like, that. It, it, the demo name was Avocado. <laughs> and I just wrote this like massive like Gregorian chant thing and then people just kept like adding on to it and then I was in Montreal to see Justine bless her her friend passed away that night and she was just a mess and she stayed up sobbing her eyes out um writing the bridge that whole piano bridge I don't even think I can play it for you guys anymore my phone's about to die um so yeah and she she wrote hold on can you hear this hold on i think it's down because i was recording can you hear this can you hear that yep okay so you can't really see me because my phone's charging but this whole this whole bridge here the uh i don't even think that's right uh, i don't know my own songs I'm not even using the pedal. Yeah. So she wrote that whole section. It sounded like really different. Um, and she wrote it about her friend that passed away. And then I was in, I was in Germany or during festival season, staying with my friend, Ava. Shout out to Ava. She lets me crash on her couch. She's the bomb. And I let her listen to all the demos of Antiqua. Shame, because like they were really. She thought they were brilliant, and I'm like, these are so bad. But if you if you were enjoying a drink right now and listening to it, whatever. And then we get to Avocado, and she just she hears the bridge, and she just starts like sobbing. And I'm like, yeah, okay. She's like, this is so beautiful, and she lost someone really dear to her. And I was like, I I think I went back and I talked to Sam like right after, and I'm like, you know how we want to do a single? I think Avocado has to be the single. He's like, why? I'm like. It's made a few people cry. <laughs> and that's kind of like my gauge where I'm like, it, it, even if it's a shitty little demo that I like, you know, put together from home with everyone, like it, it but it's like m moving people emotionally. Um, I think that's kind of a good gauge of where to start, you know, especially with singles or it, whatever song you want to put out or, or, you know, just going through the demoing process. If people can listen to a shitty demo and be like, wow, I'm really moved by that. It's like, oh, mm. You got to keep her. <laughs> you got to go with it. I mean, I don't know if it's going to be on the album or at the end of the album, but 
I'm glad you enjoyed it. That was a labor of love and I was super nervous. And I think that this, the, the craziest part about the whole thing was at that point, we had no idea what we sounded like. Like that was the first song that we put together. And I remember talking leading up to it. We were kind of like, we were like, oh shit, like this is the first time we're actually going to hear ourselves and what we sound like. And that was almost terrifying in its own, like forget releasing it to the world. It's like, this is the first time you get to hear your new band after five years. It's like, oh shit, no stress, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> And now that that folk track, uh, if anyone owns the vinyl, there's an extra bonus track. That bonus track's getting us in a lot of trouble because people are asking us to do a whole album like that. And I'm like, I don't know if I've got it in me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no stress. Of course, it's like, no stress. It's heard a big bang out here. Everything good? Oh, I think you just put the the recycling bin back, you know, because that's noisy. <laughs> Anyways, what time are we at? It's past my bedtime, Alex. You've kept me here way too long. I'm on the wireless. My phone's dying. I'm just being an absolute deviant with your time. <laughs> you've gotten, you've gotten an I hour guess, and uh, 45 minutes out of me. I got an hour and 45 minutes out of out of Lindsay. I'm, I'm just looking through oh, the all comments. of the... I'm looking through all of the comments here and everybody is just being so amazing and so supportive. And, you know, I am, you know, just, I, I, I am just, you know, so grateful for everyone who's here. And, you know, I, I'm just, I just can't believe how many people came to hang out. We got people talking about avocado metal. Yep. <laughs> we got people talking about, uh, Curtis wants me to go play video games. And Curtis, I'll tell you this. I, I know we have an ongoing debate over what the better game is, Ocarina of Time, Zelda Ocarina of Time, or Majora's Mask. And I will say this. Majora's Mask has one of the best levels, like the best water levels in any video game that I've ever played. The Great Bay Temple is my favorite part of that game, and it is absolutely incredible because the music is beautiful. And it's so creepy and eerie and scary, but also like the weirdest, like timing and the weirdest song structure. Like, wow. Um, but I yeah. did. I actually, I'd say Zelda was kind of like the reason that I got into Harp, the Ocarina of Time, was a was it another was another masterpiece. Yeah, the Ma Ocarina of Time is absolutely a masterpiece like that game is like I, I the thing is i watched my sister play that game first when i was like four and um then i played it after her and i was like wow this is so cool and let me show you something really cool what's up so when i was little i was so obsessed with zelda that my sister drew this for me oh that's super cute and it has like a thing on it too so you can hold it like a shield that's super cute. That's so cute that you still have that. Yeah, she, me, and my, my sister was like, my sister was like, uh, really awesome, like awesome with me when I was little, and I'm still is. My sister is really awesome, and like, and she's an amazing mom to my nephew Damien. So, um, oh, I've seen pictures. He's super cute. He's so funny. <laughs> he just likes to throw things around. And he's at an age right now where he just wants to destroy everything. So, like, he just wants to whip plastic balls down the hallway and laugh. Um, <laughs> and he loves blue screws. Um, oh, you know did you see that video recently? I almost cried. I, was, <laughs> I almost oh, cried. I was not ready for this. I thought I was dead inside, and then I watched that blue screws video. Oh, my God. When Steve was just like, you know something? Like I was thinking about that so much today, and I just, I just, I had to, I felt like I was holding back tears, man, because it's so true. And he was like, and it's, especially because we were on the topic of growth, where it was just like, he was just like, you know, you remember Mr. Salt and Mrs. Pepper, like you remember them, right? And and he's like talking to you as if like it's you. And I thought about it, and I was like, when I was a kid, I really felt like Steve was talking to me. And yeah, now he, knows he how was to connect talking with to me again, and he was just like, yeah. and and he was like, just like, and he was like, you know something, 
I did Blue's Clues, and I did it with you. And we've been through so much together. We learned how to count. We learned how to count by twos. We learned how to tie our shoes. That's Franklin. Uh, we learned how to, you know, eat healthy snacks. And guess what? Now, like, look how far you've come. And that's so amazing. And I was I like, know. I was like, ah, man, I Steve. And I was like, I know what he's talking about. <laughs> I was, and he was like, and you know, and he was talking about going back to school. And he was like, and you know something? After that show, I went to college, and that was because of you. And I never forgot about you. And I'm so glad that we're still friends. And I was like, Steve, we are still <laughs> friends, man. We are still friends. After all of that, like, you're still my homie, man. I still remember sitting in front of the TV and, like, singing songs with you and, like, you know, being like so mesmer mesmerized by his striped green shirt because green was my favorite color and still is. Oh. I still love the color green. Like, you know, that's why I loved Link so much. I was like, dude, look at his green tunic. And yeah, <laughs> and and yeah, like Blues Clues is still on. Like we have a lot of people um, in here talking about Blues Clues and like you know that that show really was. A uh, really special show, and, and I, I just love that they did that. That was that really resonated me with, with me today, and like my energy just like was really just like so connected to that. And I was like, I, I you know what Steve just did is that that's how I want to make my fans feel. I want to make them feel like, listen, I'll never forget about you, and I'll never let you down, and I will always be there for you. And 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 that is like you know the same thing. Even like when when I was a kid, like I, you know, I, I guess like I kind of had like John C. Maxwell as a kid because like I always looked up to John Cena and I was like and I even got his belt. You're hilarious. This is the John Cena customized WWE Championship and it spins. Oh my god! <laughs> and I got this belt be like for Christmas when I was a kid, and I was so happy because John Cena's values were never give up, never quit. And hustle, loyalty, and respect. And I still follow that to this day. I'm like, you know, hustle, loyalty, and respect. Those are really true values that, you know, even though it was a character who was playing on TV, it really was him. That really is John Cena. And John Cena, as a guy, he's actually, like, a very grateful person. And he's a very, like, in the present, in the moment kind of guy. And I was watching recent interviews. I'm like, man, like, he really is a cool dude. And, you know, I'm glad that I looked up to somebody who had, like, such good values, like, as a kid. And mm -hmm. now I, I'm growing up and becoming the person that I need to become. And I hope that I can pass that on to the next generation. I hope that one day, like some kid can be in high school right now and see me on his TV or see me at a show and say, I hope one day I can be like Alex. And I hope that one day I have the courage to go out there and give, give him my heart because that is what I strive to do. And that is an everything. Can you imagine like, how amazing this world would be if everyone just followed their heart. I mean, and, I'd eat a lot of potatoes. But, like, if we all just, like, did what made us happy and lived in our authentic self and we're, like, all good with ourselves and good to one another, like, this world would be bomb. I mean, it already is, like, pretty bomb diggity. But, like, yeah. oh, man, I'd let, like, and, and that's why I kind of surround myself with people who are following their dreams as difficult as they may be because it's, like, it's inspiring and in being a problem solver, I'm always willing to listen and help and give feedback, you know, but it was just, man, it just, it would just be such a better place. And it's cool that you live that authenticity because man, there's no other way to live. Like why live in your shadow self? Why live a lie? Why live half awake? I mean, we could get in the whole twin flame topic. That's a whole other can of worms on fire that we don't need to open, but you know, like the, <laughs> I, don't I get me started. Just is. listen to the Patreon song on Halloween. You never heard of a twin flame? Um, no. Oh, Alex, I need a pot of coffee. Um, okay, so just beware about this because this is like a crazy. This is like a crazy concept. Um, and some people do like do live through this phenomenon where, um, pretty much you kind of it's someone you've had multiple past lives with, and they show up in your life at the right time to push you towards um, wh who you're meant to be, what you're truly meant to do. But the, the problem, it, the problem is not the problem. The challenge is, is it is a very uncomfortable relationship. Now, sometimes you can, you can date your twin flame. You can marry your twin flame. They could be your best friend. They could be the opposite sex. They could be your kid, you know, but 
it's a very challenging relationship that is teaching you a lot because they're pushing you towards your true authentic self, but because you've also had multiple past lives together um, or you have this soul connection. Um, it's, it's just, it's got a lot of challenge. Like it's so much, to, it's so much to get into. I think some people here know what I'm talking about. Maybe you have met your twin flame or someone from a past life or someone is on a spiritual plane where y'all just get each other and you speak the same language. And I have had that person show up and push me towards becoming who I was always meant to be doing what I was always meant to do with my life. But there's been a lot of challenges along the way. Um, and this person has taught me to, how to unconditionally love. Um, and, but also has shown me to be like courageous and like not put up, not take shit from anyone. And I've been like really lucky, but it, it is also painful because you know, in a lot of cases with twin frames, it, it hurts to be together, but it hurts to be apart. But like, you can't always be with them, especially during a pandemic. And there's this, I can't describe it, but there's this spiritual connection. And when shit's not going well, how much you miss them is deeper than any missing of a, a living being. I, I've never experienced anything like that. But it's there to teach you something. And they're there, they're there to push you to be everything you were meant to be and I feel like I'm finally coming to peace with it but it has been so goddamn annoying but uh yeah so that's twin flames so Alex I hope one day you do get to meet your twin flame but at the same time dear god be ready because it is not it is like it is full of challenges and lessons and when you screw up you're lucky they forgive you <laughs> <laughs> vice versa vice versa you know you're always willing to forgive them um but yeah it's it's a cool phenomenon and experience. I think uh, Machine Gun Kelly and what's her name Megan Fox they've admitted that they're twin flames, um, and even have admitted how, like how she woke up, but how there's been challenges, but how they know they're soulmates, but also Machine Gun Kelly seems like he's a bit <sighs> emotional. So you know I can see being Megan Fox. She seems really chill, like you know him flying off the handle because he can't finish a song. I'd just be like, babe, like shut up and figure it out you know so like it just it has it, it you know every every relationship's different every twin flame scenario is different but it's like I definitely can say I have one I've experienced it it's pushed me to be the best version of myself um and uh yeah I don't know I'm <laughs> like do I wish you to find your twin flame I don't know if you're supposed to you will I can't even wish that upon you <laughs> <laughs> I don't know but <laughs> I, I do know that there's like, if there's anything that I've learned from just this journey of life so far, it's that you can't resist things that happen. And no. the way it happens is the way it's supposed to happen. And you can either take it for what it is, or you can fight it. It's kind of like you get a traffic ticket, you either pay the ticket or you can fight it. And there's, is and it's it really like, worth fighting it. Is it worth fighting? It's like, yeah, how it's like because at the end of the day like and and you know this from like you know even like on a on a very fundamental level of spirituality from like a both like the secret like they say like if you're you know saying no 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 you're just going to keep getting no and if you keep on saying yes 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 you're going to keep getting yes and it's like mm -hmm. whatever life brings you you just have to accept it and say this is what we've been this is what we've been giving in this and given in this situation and either way, the destination is a destination and the how is and, and how you get there is all is, is not really up to your physical conscious self to do that. It's the what it's what you do. is well, it's how you. well you build the boat so the rest can push the wind in your sails. Exactly. And figuring out like something like how do I do this is like I guess, I guess it's like how can I do this is a better question than how do I do this. Um, because figuring out the, how I can do this is still in like the energy of the doing and mm -hmm. it's still in the showing up and it's still in the, the being wherever you need to be. And whatever life brings your way is really just putting you in a place where, uh, you're going to move forward. And I think that it's, it's like, if, if the twin flame is going to come in, if I've already met them, I don't know. Um, if it's like, You'll know weird coming. shit, like weird synch synchronicities start happening and shit just starts like lining up and you're like, wow, 
Like, I couldn't fight this if I wanted to. It's crazy. Maybe one day I'll write a book about it, but I'm not going to do that anytime soon. I don't have the time. <laughs> not right now. <laughs> we still need, like, 4,000 more albums from you before we can start reading books about Twin Flames. That's stick figure Alex in your brain wearing the belt saying that. <laughs> you need 40 more albums. You need, you need ideas. I got ideas. Stick figure Alex. Okay, so this is going to be a Canadian thing, okay? Um, you probably remember this show. I don't know. Uh, if you know maybe. Because this isn't necessarily like my generation on what did you watch YTV as a kid? Like obsessively, yes. Okay, so we okay, before I tell you the thing I'm about to tell you, I'm gonna say something really funny. My friends, like my closest homies from like elementary school, played this game with me where they would play like the first two milliseconds of a TV show from a theme song that we grew up as with as kids. And I would guess it in, like, the snap of a finger. I love it. I love it. They just play a song. I know exactly what it is. Like Yvonne of the Yukon. And they'd just be like, what? How did you know that? I'd be like, I just know the first note of the song. In yeah. the first note, I can, I can guess it. And even the most obscure show that was on at 6 in the morning, because I was up at 6 a.m. when I was, like, 10. All the time. <laughs> Remember um, those days when getting up at 6 was easy? <laughs> It was intentional, too, because I'd be like, I'm getting up at 6 in the morning so then I can play video games and watch cartoons before I go to school. <laughs> and that was, like, fully my life when I was, like, 10 years old. I was like, hell yeah, we're going to do this. So what I was going to say was there was a TV show, and it's, like, the most, like, random show ever, and it's hilarious. It was called Stickin' Around. I and... love Stickin' Around! <laughs> <laughs> And the end credit song was so weird. I remember that. There, like, that show is an acid trip. Like, yeah. wasn't it sometimes... like, that's <laughs> like the weirdest shit. <laughs> Why do I remember that? Like, I can't remember musical theory. But I there's like the, the most heaviest around. black metal. Okay, there's a section that's the most evil black metal thing ever. And I start headbanging. I'm like, dude, listen to... I was playing this for my friends. Like, we, like my, my homies from, like, elementary school. We, we were just chilling at the pond at the end of my street. And we were just like, I was like, dude, listen to this song. It's fucking epic. And it's like, it's like, it's like you know that? Because it starts out with... Yeah. Then there's like... Yeah. Do, do, do. yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> And I was like, dude, look at how fucking heavy that is. Yeah, it was amazing. Like, I'll never forget how messed up that is. Like, kind of like what Japanese anime intros are. Like, it's just all over the place. And you're just like, well, this is their pop music. So, like, no one questions it, you know? It's so amazing. I just kind of started getting into anime recently because, like, I, so I went sorry. through like my condolences. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing: I haven't gone into the subtitles yet because I'm so we're like ah, I can't do subtitles. But like I'll it's, start it's a commitment. Too. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I think I'll get around to it soon because like subtitles, I I know I'm missing on all these amazing shows, but like I'm still watching the dub shows, and it started with Yu-Gi-Oh when I was like eight. And I know Dylan hates hey, Worst Dylan, card to game to learn ever. <laughs> like, you need to be an architect and an engineer to play Yu Gi Oh! now. It is so, like, complicated. Like, he made me a zombie deck, and it's like, I understand my zombie deck, and he's trying to get me to learn other, like, and I'm like, no, like, I, I'm just sticking to my zombies. There's witches and stuff, and this is cool. This vibes with who that is. But, like, Yu Gi Oh! is just like, like, some bored ass surgeon heart surgeon somewhere in japan it's like you know what i'm so bored with life i'm gonna make the most complicated card game ever and it turns out that my boyfriend it's like his favorite game ever and he taught me it was like a pandemic thing if the pandemic didn't happen i probably would i couldn't have been arsed to learn this card game um i know someone's mentioning neon genesis that was actually the first mm -hmm. anime i watched with my boyfriend and that that was a mind screw over too i'm just like I have no idea what's going on, but it's like it's cool. <laughs> I still have to watch that one, but they just, watch I just movie? watched the last movie. It just finally came together, and I'm just like, huh, <laughs> it was weird. It's great. 
I, I totally, I, I, I watched the first episode, but I need to get back into it. I, mm-hmm. it started with Yu-Gi-Oh, of course, when I was a kid. Then, like, I recently, like, maybe, not recently, like, maybe, like, five years ago, I watched Death Note, which is, like, the, the I guess, like, gateway, it's, it's great. It's a great show, but it's also mm-hmm. the gateway drug to anime. Um, and mm-hmm. it's awesome because, like, Light and L are, like, the coolest contrast of, like, rivals ever. Other yeah, than, like, they really Yu-Gi-Oh. are. Yeah. But, um, I started watching Berserk recently. And that one's dark, I, but that actually fits your music. I love I it. I never even thought about that. That's like your aesthetic to it. It is. It, yeah. Totally. Damn. I was watching it. I'm like, my God. Dark this fantasy. Is dark. dark fantasy. Yeah. Like, it's it's funny. The, the game Dark Souls and Bloodborne, which inspired Blood of Indigo, are actually inspired mm-hmm. by Berserk. And that's, that's why hilarious. I started watching it. Yeah, and I I was it. Like, I've never watched it. I haven't gotten to it yet. It's, it's on the list. <laughs> It's really good. Like it's mm-hmm. it's it's super cool. Great story. It's like really interesting characters, and mm-hmm. and that's all you can really ask for. And I and I'm still kind of waiting for it to unfold because I know something hectic's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. But like mm-hmm. it's kind of like the anime thing where they just kind of draw things out for a really long time, make you get to know these characters, and then they start being like the yeah. Well, Unless if he's, I wouldn't call someone my friend unless they were my equal. And then they keep on hearing that same thing over and over again. The protagonist with no music is like, with like an extreme close-up shot. Then it's like, and then it's like, <laughs> then, he hear, then he hears it again, and he's like, I have to remember my friends. I have to remember my friends. I have to remember my friends. Amazing. When I when I watch an anime now, I'm just gonna think of you and laugh when I see that. That's like most animes. Usually it's like it's like giant robot. I have to remember my friends. And oh my god, this guy is not my friend. He is my enemy. Ah! And then, Power of friendship. That's, well, Yu-Gi-Oh! is literally just like, oh, I can't wait to remember all of my friends. And then like, Yami's like, joke's on you, Kaiba. I can destroy the moon and destroy the entire battlefield. And then like, all this hectic stuff happens. And I'm like, dude, this is like an eight-year-old's dream right now. Like, no wonder I love this show so much. When I was eight years old, Yu-Gi-Oh! was hype. Like, I looked forward to that, like, before swimming lessons, like, all the time. Like, I'd watch it right before swimming lessons. I'd be like, okay, it's going to... On the American channel, which we got Kids WB, we would watch that, and, like, we'd get the new episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! while, like, YTV was, like, 100 years behind and running reruns. I'm like, man... Yeah, they were kind of bad like that. I was, like, waiting for the Buffalo stations to, like, show me the newest episodes of Beast Wars. And, like, I was, like, Buffalo's on top of it. Fox Channel's on top of it. (laughs) Why can't... What's wrong, YTV? You having a hard time obtaining those licenses? Like, what's your excuse? For real. But the Board of Canadian Broadcasters haven't approved it yet? Yet they're feeding me house hippos? I don't know, man. (laughs) I don't know. I was just talking about that with God. Like... The whole yeah, house I, I of- listened to the pod. I listened to that podcast. It was hilarious. <laughs> I was I like, went, true. I went crazy over those house hippos. I was like, man, that's hype. Like, I want a house hippo. I leave and the crumbs to the house hippos. That whole thing of just like being a kid <laughs> and waiting for New Year's Eve to happen, and you're just like, okay, like it's New Year's Eve, and I like do the math in my head, like like it was as if it was like an anime where like it would be like it would like have like the reverb on my voice. I'd be like, if I wait until twelve o'clock and then I stay up two hours, it'll be two in the morning. Around that time is when house hippos come out. So all I have to really do is wait two hours. I can do this. And then I would just kind of be waiting around, and then my mom would be like, all right, Alex, you need to go to bed now. And I'd just be like, well, am I? Am I really going to bed right now? And I'd just be like, and then, like, my friends would be over still, and I'd be like, wait, my friends haven't left yet. So when we get to the front door, my parents are going to talk at the door for at least 20 minutes. In that yeah, time, please. if we run upstairs and play video games, they might sit down and have a coffee, so then they stick around for another three hours, which has happened before. And especially I, when you're in an Italian household, because it's always like, hey, so you, uh, you go, I want to do espresso. Yeah, espresso. Everybody like espresso. <laughs> yes. Espresso. I grew up around <laughs> Italians. I know what it's like. It's uh, a <laughs> fun time. There's always food. There's always, always food and espresso, and like it's always like an, on Christmas, it's like, Hey, can we open presents now? No, we have to eat fruit first. Like why? <laughs> I don't know. Did you? Did, like, like, did, like, because I know, like, like, cause I, are, are you? Because you're 
half uh, Romanian and, and Irish, right? Am I, am I mistaken? Yeah. So we do, my, my mom's family, we do Christmas Eve. We'd celebrate, which is great. I got two Christmases. Like growing up, everyone's like, why well, I got these gifts? I'm like, I freaking got presents on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And they're like, not fair. I'm like, Eastern European perks. Yeah. So yeah, we, we did more of a traditional thing on Christmas Day with like my dad's side of the family. It's a weird, it's a weird mix like i always say i'm a vampire potato <laughs> you know like, we did the same yeah. thing it was like we did christmas eve and christmas day so it was like christmas yeah, eve yeah, it's cool, like eh? mom's side christmas day dad's side and whatever happened last year you swap them and, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and and either way it's just like hey like it's like christmas can we open presents and it's like no we have to eat fruit first like if you wanted to find my childhood that's literally what it is like if somebody handed me like a piece of paper and it said this piece of paper when you open it it's going to define your childhood and if i read that i will either burst out laughing or i will cry because right. it is the most alex thing i could ever imagine <laughs> like but that explains, for all our friends who are watching who don't know this, I have a complete 90s TV setup. See, you're it. so cool. Like, you actually have cool shit in your and room. Nintendo 64 like, collection. Yeah. Yep, yep. This is like the millennial equiv equivalent to, like, owning a Lamborghini and, like, you know, like, you're like, like, you're like the nerdy Ty Lopez right now. <laughs> But you actually own that shit. You actually own that shit. Like, I'll give you, yeah. before we head out of here, like, I'll give you the, the not-so-cool tour of my life. So this is my production desk. That's an actual cell, animation cell, from the anime Ergo Proxy. I got it for $100 on eBay because I made some money and I should have paid off my bills instead. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is what my boyfriend calls the wall of narcissism but it's actually all the amazing fan art my fans he just does he doesn't have fans my fans made for me so i put it up to remind myself every day that what i do matters and i'm making a difference in the world that's my treadmill it's collecting dust this is my harp this is my baby and i have more harps on the ground i have five harps now i have a problem um what else is cool that i can show you not the dehumidifier um <laughs> this is my cd collection for those of you who remember and know yeah the, the fan made a doll of me it's terrifying but i still love it um awesome. those are vulture feathers and then of course actually these were supposed to go in storage my boyfriend held on to them until i moved and then he remembered to give them back to me i still have most of my beast wars action figures so this Amazing. is inferno he was it was it decepticon was that was that what this guy was? Anyway, I got Inferno, I got Pterodactyl, I got the Shark guy. Yeah, so these these all kind of oh here Tarantulas is that was that his name? I got him. <laughs> awesome. So anyway, that's like some cool stuff that I own. But anyways, they have to go back into storage, and then I have some Pokemon tree ornaments I still haven't put in wow. storage either. So, but yeah, like I'm not actually all that like I'm not like cool like you like i'm 10 years older than you yeah i totally got this from walmart for 10 bucks it was amazing <laughs> <laughs> anyways your room and your stuff is way cooler than mine because i don't know well actually all my cool stuff is in storage so like you know when pokemon kind of got big like last year that youtuber guy opened like a pack of pokemon cards he bought like a whole box that wasn't un like wasn't open since the 90s and he like opened up all the cards but like my pokemon collection went from like two thousand dollars most of it good for you know kindle and a fire to like being five thousand dollars and there was part of me was like i could use five thousand dollars but then i opened up the bin of all my pokemon stuff like i have like the first four beanie babies that K kfc put out don't worry guys and, and, and buy chicken and eat the chicken like friends got them for me and i'm like I can't sell this. This is my childhood. Like, why would I do that? So anyways, now it's depleted back to like maybe less than $2,000. But there's like a whole bin of cool shit in the storage under it's like the Harry Potter part of the house is like under the stairs. It's actually a really good song by the birthday masker written called under the stairs. For those of you who want a cool song to listen to. But yeah, I don't I don't really own anything cool. 
I would say, like, <laughs> with, like, that whole, like, wall of narcissism, oh. I think, is it, it's honestly, like, that's an honor. I mean, like, like, like so, that, that, that's just rem a reminder that so many people love you and so many oh. people admire you. And I think that's a beautiful way to honor your fans. And I would do the same thing. If somebody drew a picture of me, I would be, like, just over the moon. I would be, like, thank you, because that tells me that somebody felt like my legacy touched them so much that they yeah. wanted to like honor me. And I think that's a beautiful thing. So I, I think if anything, it's like, that's the coolest thing ever. And one day I, I have space like in my room for fan art. Like I, I, I have space in my room for another, another wrestling belt and it's going to be the dark fantasy metal tag team belt. Um, and yeah, uh, you got this. Yeah. Like I, I, I have the space and um like, if you want to see even more nerdy stuff, it's like, this is like breaking the fourth wall. Here's like the rest of my room. <laughs> um, there's my it's so clean. I do work stuff. Um, oh, look at this. I have a collection of Yoshis. Oh, that's super cute. Um, the Yoshis watch me watch TV, which is kind of creepy. I also have your Worlds Away album like right here. Aww. Because it that reminds was, that me that was like my survival album to get out of burnout. Like that was my baby. And here's your message to me, which I always oh, look yeah. at because it always inspires me. And it says to Alex with a heart, "Thank you always. You inspire me more than you know. Always Ooh. grateful to call you a friend. Much love and your signature." And that always makes me smile whenever I look at it. And I noticed that you gave a shout out to Blood of Indigo in the booklet. And I was so happy to see that. And I also have your postcard here, too. Your postcard is right here. Oh, the Patreon postcard. What would I do without those people like yourself? So cheers. But anyways, my friend, it is late. Like, and... Yeah, we've been going ben a while. is, like, blowing up my phone because Antiqua has a launch tomorrow. Only if you're on the mailing list. It's out Friday. Um, but this has, been, this has been sick, man. It's always good to chat with you. I hope those of you who've joined showed up, enjoyed it. Uh, mind my honesty hour nonsense. This is me on very little sleep insanity, but it's going to be worth it because by Halloween, y'all are going to be like, that bitch took over the world. <laughs> Absolutely. I always believe in you, Lindsay, and I and I'm I so can. grateful. I, I'm I'm like I know I said this like a hundred times, but I'm going to say this again. I'm so grateful for you. No, I'm so grateful I'm to call you friend. You I'm so Glad grateful. That you, I'm I'm so happy we met because you have given me so much inspiration and given me so much light oh. in my life and I, I i know like you know <laughs> it's, it's it's always funny whenever like uh you know somebody is constantly complimenting you but i feel like i have so much love to give you because um the amount that you've done for me and for my band and for us like you are somebody that inspired mm -hmm. us i'm not only speaking oh, for myself but for nathan and mario those guys have so much love and respect for you as well. And we are always, you know, we always look to you and look up to you and say, you know, Lindsay, Lindsay is an example of somebody that we want to be like. Um, oh. And that is, you know, on a, you know, quality level of music, like making sure that we put excellence first, um, treating our friends. It's, our it's so funny that you say it like that. Cause like right before I'm done finishing a song, I am the hottest mess. Like I am just like, I'm like, is it good enough? Do I need to fix that? Do I need to change that? Oh my god. Can I put a kalimba in there? Like I'm just I'm just crazy. Like I'm I'm Quentin Tarantino on steroids, like right before finishing. You're just like quality of music. I'm like <laughs> quality, yeah. <laughs> no, it is it is quality. Regardless, like I I know you're doing the Canadian self-deprecating thing. Um <laughs> No, I'm just being honest. Like everyone thinks like you're like you're so poised and you've got it together. <laughs> Like, he doesn't regardless, know I've been wearing listen, pajama pants the whole time. <laughs> regardless of, of, listen, like, I'm, like, when we do our music on Zoom, like, 90% of the time. And yeah. we're always in pajamas, and we're always chilling. And regardless of, like, you know, like, whether you have it together or not, it's, the result is you, like, it's you just getting it, it done. It's you got it done. It's just getting, the one like, thing I know Rick Rubin it, say is, like, you're successful once you've released it to the world. It, how they respond to it doesn't matter. Like, exactly. It. And, yeah. 
And and you know and 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 it's the it's just it's just your energy that we are so that, like like we are so inspired by and it's just yeah. the way that you carry yourself it's the way that you talk to your fans it's the way that you talk to people and I'll tell this story to to end off because um, I told you this story in person oh my god I get to go to but... sleep soon yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm so sorry um, it's but past my bedtime. I know it's past your bedtime but you know what. I have to let, I, I'm, I have to let this coffee run its course because I had a coffee to do this and I got to make sure I get it all out. So I'm going to tell this story to end things off and then we can, then I can do my plug and then we can go home and I can probably watch an episode of Berserk or something. Like, are you not home right now? You said go home. I'm like, I'm home. <laughs> I'm, I'm right at home, especially with the people watching right now. You guys are the best. Thank you for being here. All right. So I broke a dish. I broke dishes tonight because I'm an absolute klutz. So I'm gonna go get a band aid, and but I will listen the whole time. You want to tell this story? So I'll tell this story. I I'm told listening. this to Lindsay at the rock pile outside in the parking lot, and this is the story of how I met Lindsay. And I'm sure that a lot of you watching this can relate to this. You know, one thing that I will tell you that immediately when I met Lindsay, I knew that she was an amazing human being because, you know, I I, I was at the show like in 20. Uh, 15 i think 2016 was it the cradle show for hammer no this was a vakken metal battle oh. show for some oh. like uh you're talking about. uh for some event right it was like a it was it was like this vakken metal battle show and there were just like bands from uh I, I think it was like uh at the hard luck or something and like a bunch of like toronto bands were there and um i remember like there was a lot of chitter chatter going on like uh in the venue and they were just like, hey, like, you know who that is? That's Lindsay Schoolcraft from Cradle of Filth. Like, we don't want to make a big deal crazy. out of it. And, and, <laughs> and they were just like, we don't want to make a big deal out of it or anything. But, like, you know, like, just, like, keep it cool, keep it cool. And, like, you know, just, like, you know. And then I was just like, hilarious. And I was like, honestly, like, I'm just going to go talk to her and say hi. And I did. And, I, and so I went up. And, and I just went and spoke with you and we had a lovely conversation just about like, you know, music and all that stuff. And like what I was doing at the time, which was radio and like how we would potentially set up an interview. And this was like in 2015, 2016, I think. That was um, a long time ago. And um, I remember. Long we were talking. Ass time ago. Yeah. Like we were just talking and I remember just like somebody pulled you aside and my immediate thought was, well, I mean, like, she's famous, so I guess a lot of people want to talk to her. So um, I was like, I wasn't expecting you to come back and continue the conversation. So I was just kind of there. I was just like, all right, cool. But then you came back to me and you were just like, hey, I came back to talk to you because we were having a really great conversation and I, and I wanted to talk with you. And I really felt like you treated me like somebody, like, like a friend like somebody and, and you treated me with, with empathy and you treated me like I was the only person in the room. And yeah. after everything that I heard, like just bef leading up to when I met you, it was just like, I, I realized you were such a nice person because I had never really experienced that with somebody before where like you meet a famous person, but then like they come back I think and they it's, talk to you. I think I'm famous. <laughs> and well, okay. just kind of like, you know, I, but I was also 19 years old. Oh yeah, and you were you were so young. You were like all baby faced with your short hair. It was adorable. Yeah, baby face, short hair, and just like, uh, you know, I, I I think I was just like, but then I was so happy because you came back and you wanted to continue that conversation with me, and you made me feel seen, heard, and understood. And those are the Amanda. That's my goal in life. Things. I want and, people to be heard and seen. That's and then like try to understand them. That's it. And, That's and then do. that was, you know, when I knew like you were an awesome person. And then, you know, then we have the story later on, like when I would when I told you I want to be a metal vocalist, I want to do this, I think this is my calling in life. And you said you can absolutely do this and you can do this and you're gonna be great. And I never forgot about that. And I always oh. remembered that and it always stuck with me. And that is why I think that you have such a power to influence and such oh, a man. you know resonance with me and that is why i strive to be like you because whenever i meet a fan in person if somebody comes up to me is shy to talk to me i don't ever want them to feel like they're they need to be afraid or shy or 
intimidated. I walk. They the are field. though. They will be though. Like it just it happens, but, and all you can do is just create a space and, where people feel welcome. You know exactly, and that's exactly what you did, and that's what I want to do. I want to do that for my fans. Mm. I want to say, listen, we're friends. You will, and, and you know, if somebody comes up to me and tells me like, you know, like your music changed my life or whatever, that would be the most amazing thing. And I want them to know how much I appreciate that because I really want to have a special connection with our fans. I want them to feel like what the truth is. The truth is I want to be friends with our fans. I don't want to hide behind a wall and, you know, act as if I'm some celebrity because I tell you that doesn't work these, these days anymore. It, that's like career suicide. Like that's shooting yourself in the foot. And I mean, like, I feel kind of bad. I haven't really been replying to many people on Instagram, but I think they understand because I'm writing a lot of music right now. And that's where it's kind of like, that's an acceptable time, I think, to be a little more quiet. But with all those hours of travel, that's like the best time to communicate with everyone. And it's like, if you're not online and you feel that like, interacting with your fans is, is above you you've you've failed it's just the way things are today and it can be fun like yes there's sometimes people who are pricks but they're not really your fans you know what i mean like that's what the block button's for like there's there's a lot of great communications to, to have like a lot sorry a lot of great conversations to have out there and i think if anything like my fans have inspired me like through their their stories of what they've gone through and what they're like, I, I get so excited. Like when a fan has a child or um, a fan has like, they have a baby or they've finished school or they've accomplished something or they've released their book. Like it, it's just such a beautiful thing to see. And it's like, you know, it's like, wow. Like I understand the level of courage it took to do that, but they, they kind of inspire me. Cause I, I wouldn't say like, I doubt myself anymore, which kind of terrifies me. Cause like, I think there needs to be a level of questioning, but there is like sometimes imposter syndrome, especially with doing Antiqua. They're going to hear this and be like, what the hell, Lindsay? Um, but uh, my band members will hear that and say that. But like, especially the weird Patreon music I'm doing, but it's like, you have these moments where you're like, whoa, like, is this a good idea? But then you're just like, well, I'm happy. So screw what they think. You know what I mean? Yeah. You do, I mean, you just, yeah. You see we all your fans are doing, you're like, like damn. Like like we're just about like we haven't even started advertising yet for our music but i'm and i'm ready to do it next week like i'm ready to go but i still have some of those feelings kind of in the back of my head like what if somebody says something that pisses you off and i'm just like no that's not going to happen because i'm confident in what we do and i know this is going to be cool because no, someone, I, believe yeah. in, I believe in our music and i yeah. believe in what we do and i love this so much and i I, I, I think we've given our hearts and our souls to this because we, you know, as friends, I think the album is really a reflection of how much we love what we do. And I think that the world needs to hear this. And this is a, the type of music that needs to be heard by the people. And I hope that one day... For the people. For the people. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's the wrestling in me. For the people! The Rock fans! <laughs> the millions and millions of the Rock fans! If you man! What the rock is cooking. But oh, I, I think, Lindsay, like you have this, like I was just saying, like you, you have this amazing connection with your fans. And, I, and, and you inspire me so much to want to be like you in that respect where I want to have that same connection. I want to make people feel like they're the only, per the only person on this planet right now. And I want to connect with them on a deeper level because I truly believe that that is what my purpose in life is to do. I'm here to give to something that is bigger than me and leave something behind that when I'm long gone, that will live for generations to come. And I think that you have done such an amazing job of that. And every time I listen to you talk on one of your lives, whenever I listen to you do a podcast, I listen to all your stuff because I look up to you so much. Oh, cheers, and man. I really hope, I'm sorry I'm repetitive sometimes, but... <laughs> I, I know what I mean. I, 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 I would say I look up to Leah and I'm just like, all right, Leah, what, what little nugget of knowledge are you going to grace me with today? But, I look up to her too. I, 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 I'm in her yeah. creative CEO um, group. Mm -hmm. And like, whenever she talks, I'm just like, write it down, write it down, write it down. 
<laughs> but she but she learns you know she's created her own stuff but she learns it from a lot of other people and I just kind of follow what books she recommends and but um no you're very sweet Alex thank you I mean I never really saw myself in like a mentorship role I just want to show up and do good and make music and oh my god dear god help you yeah that's what my apple books looks like I'm not gonna lie damn in your closet <laughs> In my closet, right beside. Okay, like we're talking about '90s TV shows reboot. Da -da 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 -da. Oh. Okay, Alex, I am so yep. tired. Like it's been so <laughs> stinking awesome hanging out here with you. But like, I'm ten years older than you, and shit don't work the way it used to. So I am so tired. I have a headache now because this is like what happens when you get old. So I gotta bounce. Like I gotta peace out. But like, dude, thank All you right. again, everyone. Go check out Blood of Indigo. There's three free songs. Go to the link in the bio. Antigua has something Friday. It's going to be super cool. I have a feeling it's going to sell out on the mailing list. So go join Antigua's mailing list if you really want this thing. Um, and that's it. And there's tons of new music coming from me f until 2035 because I don't know how to say no to side projects and people ask me to be on their music. So I'm sorry to the people I said I wouldn't do it anymore, but it is what it is. <laughs> well, with that being said, Lindsay, I'm sorry you have a headache now. <laughs> but it was worth it it's my sinuses they're acting up they're like you've been looking at the screen too long go to bed so i hope it was worth it i i just yeah. before we get going i need to give like the most sincerest thank you to all of our people who are here today you guys are literally the lifeblood of what we do we could not do this without you and thank you for being here because you guys are helping us live our dream and that is of making music and that is of doing this and doing it with the most love and the most uh, genuine purpose. And, you know, there, there are so many people here. I, I need to just give shout outs to Dylan Gowan. Thanks for hearing, being here, bro. Appreciate oh, you. Nathan, Dylan. thank you for being here. Uh, the Big Bad She-Wolf, thank you for being here. And thank you so much for the follow. I really appreciate you being, being here. Uh, Corey Westbrook is here. And Corey is right. uh, from the C-Squared team. And Corey is absolutely amazing. I always. She's also my her. manager. She and she's also your manager. She's the best in the whole wide world. I love you, Corey. Thank you for putting she's up with awesome. all my shit. Man. I'm voguing for you right now. I am so tired. I want to go to bed. I want to go to bed. I want to go to bed. <laughs> Lindsay wants to go to bed, so she's giving me the signals. So with that being said, guys, we got to get going. So with that all being said, go to my bio right now. I don't care if this video ends and you're on your way there. Go to my bio right now and sign up for three days of Dark Fantasy Metal. And I promise you that you will get an awesome experience and a very lovely taste of the debut album by Blood of Indigo, Dawn of the Shaded World. And we just announced that Lindsay Schoolcraft is going to be a I guest. The album. She's going to be a guest on the title track, Dawn of the Shaded World. Wow, um, that's, a, that's a lot of responsibility. I, I didn't know that till now. Yeah, that's the title track. I just showed you the artwork cool. today. Um, and uh, this is a huge, you know, no this is a pressure. huge honor because <laughs> we had a full circle moment here. Lindsay inspired me to, to do this and was a big part of me uh, living my dream. And the guys also as well have given their hearts and souls to this and have given it everything. Um, and Lindsay, you are awesome. You are fantastic. Thank I can. You're pretty awesome too. About, thank you so much. I can talk about how amazing you are all night long. But with that being said, guys, let's sign off. And Goodbye, let's everyone. Say, let's say good night. Let's let Lindsay get some sleep. And I'm going to go watch Berserk. <laughs> okay, enjoy it. Everyone, have a good night. Thanks so much. Have a good night, guys. Take care. See you later, Lindsay. Thank you.